Welcome to our hybrid meeting. <clears throat> participants in the room, please do not join the meeting in Zoom. Virtual participants, if you lose connection at any point during the meeting, you can reconnect by clicking the link or calling the number in your original email. Members attending virtually, if you are able, please activate your video for purposes of quorum and keep it on for the duration of the meeting. Staff, if you are able, please activate your video when you are speaking. Members of the committee, when you wish to speak, ask questions, or request a roll call vote, please raise your hand uh, if you're in the room or raise your hand virtually. Uh, those in the room will have their, uh, their microphones are already turned on, um, but the chair will tell you when you're recognized to speak. Those attending virtually can unmute themselves when recognized. When you are finished, all should mute themselves. Members of the public who have registered to speak, those appearing virtually, the name you entered in Zoom must match the name you entered in registration. You will remain muted until called upon. If you are here in person, when you are called to speak, please come to the little chair and tables right there in front of us, um, and uh, you'll be recognized. For all registrants, the clerk will tell you when your time is up. After all speaker, public speakers, a member of the body may ask you a question. If you need to share documentation with the committee, please send it to the email list on today's agenda. Thanks. Chair, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Mr. Verbeck. All right. So this meeting is governed by Robert's Rules of Order. All speakers wishing to address the committee regarding an agenda item must first complete a registration form and submit it to the city clerk designee. Speakers may speak to the committee only after they're called by the chair. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes. After speaking to the committee, please take your seat in the gallery. The public is not allowed to address or respond to speakers or committee members unless they have been recognized by the chair of the committee. Mr. Verbeck, are there any notified absences? Uh, there are not. All right. Will you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Alder Miazzi. Uh, present. All the odds is here. Alder Revere? Here. Uh, Alder Revere is here. Mr. Bruchuk? Here. Mr. Bruchuk is here. Uh, Mr. Donnelly? Present. Mr. Donnelly is here. Uh, Alder Knox? Here. Alder Knox is here. Uh, Ms. Farley? Present, and I'll have my video on it just a moment. All right, cool. And uh, Ms. Carter? Present. Carter's here. And, uh, oh, and uh, Ms. Westra. Here. Ms. Westra's here. Chair, we do have quorum. Excellent. So I call this meeting of ALAC to order at 5.42 p.m. First order of business is approval of the minutes from our meeting on March 20th, 2024. Committee, what's your pleasure? Move to approve. Your motion to approve from Mr. Bruchak is there a second? Second from Ms. Westra. Any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item, uh, the agenda, uh, the minutes uh, from last month are approved. Next up, item one, public comment. Mr. Verbeck, are there any registrants for general public comment? Uh, that's a good question. Sorry, let me pull that up. Take your time. There are not. All right, moving right along. Disclosures and recusals. Members of the body should make any required disclosures or recusals under the city's ethics code. Does anyone have anything to disclose or any items for which they'd like to recuse themselves? Or not would like to feel the ethical need to recuse themselves? All right, moving right along. Presentation of the consent agenda. So at this time, Mr. Verbeck will present a proposed consent agenda. Uh, each item will have a proposed action to take, which could be uh, granting it or referring it. And once he has presented it, members of the body will have opportunity to uh, separate any item that they would like discussed. Uh, also, if there's any item that has a member of the public registered to speak in opposition, 
um, it will be separated from the consent agenda. Once we've finished separating anything that people don't want on there, somebody will make a motion to approve the consent agenda. We'll take care of all of that stuff at once and then move on. So uh, anyone who is here, please listen for if your item is on the consent agenda, but don't leave yet. Um, once we have voted on it, if everything that you're here for has been disposed of, you can head home. Mr. Ribic, can you please uh, tell us what is on the proposed consent agenda? Sure. The proposed consent agenda for April 17th, uh, 2024, for the Alcohol License Committee. Uh, recommend the council to grant uh, change of agent items 3, 4, and 5, entity reorganization items 7 and 8, uh, request to extend license issuance beyond the 180 day limit under MGO 38.05, item number 9. Uh, change of license premises, item 14, and uh, refer to future meetings of the Alcohol License Review Committee, um, uh, public hearing, new license, item 17. Um, hang on, Jim. One of us got something wrong. What did you say item nine was? Um, I said it was the request to extend license issue. Okay. Yeah, cool. I, mis I just misheard you. Uh, do any of these items have registrants in opposition wishing to speak? Not these reg reg uh, items, no. Uh, committee, are there any items which you would like separated from the consent agenda? All right, hearing none, do uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as proposed. Move approval. Mr. Mr. Ms. Westra, second from Mr. Bruchak. Is there, oh, did, Alder Knox. Yeah, um, regarding item number 17, Mm -hmm. I did talk to the owner and instructed him to call the clerk or try to get a hold to the chair. He's He doesn't want to move forward, so I don't know if we want to refer it now if he didn't do that. But that's item 17. Yeah, the applicant had, had emailed me and said that they were in, okay. in conversation right. with the uh, police district captain and said that they wanted it to be referred because they're still having conversations. Thank you. Okay, good. Excellent. Thank you, Alder Knox and Mr. Verbeck. Uh, any other questions, discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent with the motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as proposed? All right, hearing none, motion carries. Uh, so everyone now listening more closely, Mr. Rubick is going to read off everything that has just been decided. And again, if everything that you're here for is on that list, you do not need to stick around. Mr. Rubick. Sure. The past consent agenda for ALRC meeting April 17, 2024. Recommended council to grant item number three, change of agent, Orange Tree Imports, Inc. Item number four, change of agent, Portillo's Hot Dogs, LLC at 7230 West Town Way. Item number five, change of agent, Portillo's Hot Dogs, LLC at 4505 East Town Mall. Item number seven, entity reorganization for Willie Street Co-op. Item number eight, entity reorganization for Williamson Street Grocery Cooperative. Item number nine, request to extend license issuance beyond the 180-day limit under MGO 38.05, Double Tap Madison, LLC. Item 14, change of license premises, Red Sushi 2, LLC and uh, refer to future meeting of the Alcohol License Review Committee. Item number 17, public hearing, new license, the City of Four Lakes, LLC. Excellent, thank you very much. So let's carry on. Uh, we have next. Sure, I, if I could, um, item 13 um, is a change of premises. Mm -hmm. um, it should have been on last month's agenda due to uh, our error. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was wondering if we could take that one first since it should have been last week. By all means, let's jump to item 13. So do we have a registrant here for item 13? Uh, yeah, Chris Welsh is registered. 
I don't know if Chris is here. I am. Oh, oh excellent. Yeah. So you want to come in to the table? Excellent. Welcome, Chris. Sorry about the confusion from last month. Not at all. And can you tell us what you are proposing, please? Sure. I'm the store manager at the separate Hy-Vee liquor store. It's called the Wine Spirits. It's separate from the one on Whitney Way. This is located at Mineral Point. It's opened up roughly about two years ago, and when it did, it had a few stipulations as a new business. Um, I'm here to see if I can get number one and number three just dropped. Uh, my original application was to change number two. I no longer want to do that. It's it's fine is the short answer. All right. Mitty, what questions do you have for the applicant? All right. I'm currently pulling up the current conditions. Uh, yeah, if you could read those off, that would be great. I'm trying to get them up too. Yep. Wait a minute. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Much better. Well, while you're doing that, um, can I ask the applicant uh, number six? Uh, did you have a neighborhood meeting six months after? I mean, number five, sorry. Sure. Um, I reached out to the city. Apparently, that this location of the, the Wine and Spirits isn't in a neighborhood. It's in a business okay. district, so there was no association for me to contact. Okay, so thank that you. was a real easy one to check off. Then. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So you said uh, you'd like to strike conditions one and three? Correct. All right. So condition one is the establishment shall not sell, dispense, or give away fermented malt beverages in the original container in amounts less than the amount contained in a six-pack of 12-ounce bottles or cans. This is only applicable to fermented malt beverages, which fall into the following categories of brands, domestic premium, domestic sub-premium, which includes value and economy brands, malt liquor, and similarly situated imported brands. Condition three says, the establishment shall not sell, dispense, or give away intoxicating liquor in the original container in amounts of 200 milliliters or less in volume. Intoxicating liquor shall include wine in the original container with an alcohol content of 15% or less by volume. Mr. Bruchak. Um I move to approve. Yep. Second. Questions. All right. Uh, Alter Vervier. Thank you, Chair. Welcome. So I remember when this application was before us. Were you before us personally or were you hired I was not, since? No, okay. I've been hired since. So it was controversial. That's why we added all these conditions. Oh, okay. And there was a neighborhood opposition and the opposition of the Alder of the district at the time who's no longer in office. Did you, uh, you already answered that you received information that there was no neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Did you contact Alderperson Conklin, the Alder of the district? No, I contacted a different Alder for that district, not Conklin. Who did you talk with? I'm not sure. Can you confirm, Jim, isn't this in Alder Conklin's district? Maybe I did. I think I'm thinking of a former Alder Conkle. <laughs> Yeah, she, who's been out of office for quite some time. Yeah, uh, I did contact the elder. She had some questions for me. Um, I, I guess one of them was why, why are you choosing to do this? The, you know, the short answer is that I don't think there was originally when this applicant, when it was controversial, um, the, the pushback was from all the other competition. So within a square mile of that location is a Steve's, the Woodman's, the original High V two quick trips, all that are able to sell these two things that I cannot. So um, it was originally put on as a stipulation that we could come back within six months and change, but right. there's been so much management, it just never happened, and no one bothered read, bothered to read the liquor license. So, when, did, when did you actually open, sir? Uh, early 2022, I believe. Okay. Uh, 
I see the license was granted by the Common Council in March of 2021, and there were numerous emails in opposition that are in the record from our meeting back in 2021. I think part of this was that the alder at the time, Paul Skidmore, did have concerns about panhandling and the like. Have you had any issues in, outside your store whatsoever related to panhandling? No. Did you speak with the captain of the West Police District? I did. And what was that conversation like? Uh, just if I had a, a plan, if there was an increase in either crime or panhandling, some you know ideas that I could put forth. One of them is what I've used in the past, and I, I use it at a, a, another store that I run, Trixie's Liquor, is you can limit customers to two visits per time. You put a little sign on the door, half the people chuckle, but the staff can use that then as kind of a protectionary weapon. You start seeing an issue that you can just simply say, hey, sir, you, you've had here. And that's the number one issue with essentially number one, which is a single serve can, and issue number three, which is alcohol sold in, say, 50 or 200 ml. So with number one, actually, you're able to do craft... Uh, and other other single serve. Um, this one is just limiting it to the cheaper stuff, although uh, domestic premium is not necessarily cheap. Um, so uh, again, the, the problems with these is that you just see that return customer. Someone, instead of buying a pint or a bottle, they're coming in three or four times and they're just individually buying a can of beer or individually buying a shot. By limiting it to two times per person, you just simply give the employee that's working the weapon to be like, sorry, you're not serving you today. Um, mm. It's worked well with me in the past. I appreciate that. I presume you've had a lot of disappointed customers that wish to have half pints and so forth. <laughs> um, it, it, it just certainly odd out of the, say, eight liquor stores in that area that we have this limitation. So, it, you know, mm -hmm. Hy-Vee being corporate, it is just something that's just only like paying, being like, what are these on this liquor license? And is an opportunity for it to be dropped. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that. As I read all of these many letters of opposition in 2021. They largely centered on saturation because there are so many Class A establishments in the area, traffic, and then at least a couple do have concerns about panhandling and so forth. Thank you. I'm glad from your perspective everything's gone very well. And yep. so. I'm actually surprised it's taken so long for you to come back because I, I presume this does affect the bottom line somewhat. It does. I've only been with the company a few months. So. Oh, I see. So it was your initiative. <laughs> I was the only one that read this that was posted on the wall for the last three years. So I hope they weren't in violation before your... your uh, uh, no, no, no. Not at all. <laughs> no. Very good. I have no further questions for you. I do want to ask Captain Hansen, Chair, at the appropriate time. I don't know if there's others that wish have any questions of the applicant or not. Uh, let's go with uh, Ms. Carter. Uh, thank you. Um, I recall that this area, although there's not a neighborhood centered around the area of this store, it is the surrounding neighborhoods that had the issue. Now, my recollection also was this was an area that had um, a lot of police calls. So, my question to you, other than your concern about being competitive with your competition, has there been um, an increase in police calls or has it uh, leveled off? And maybe now that I think about it, that I've said it out loud, I think that's more of a handsome uh, question. But have you seen any of that since you just got there? And when did you get there again? Uh, end of January end of this January year. Yep, end of this January. This so no, I, I, okay, I have not seen any increase or, or any issues. As far as I know, the police have not been called to that area. I guess if these were all concerns about the new application in 2021, we could look at an arrest history since then. And has there been an increase in problems or panhandling since the store has been opened. Has the staff uh, informed you of any issues they've had prior to you coming? None. 
Okay. Well, then I will forward my question right over to Captain Hansen Extraordinaire. And then you can also tie in any questions that the other extraordinaire, Alder Prevere, might have. Sounds like a plan. Um, so we do not see a high volume of police calls here at uh, the 7475 location for High V. Uh, there are panhandlers in the ones and twos um, to the west of this location, but nothing directly in and around within three blocks of this High V location. So, um, and if there have been individuals going in and, and buying, uh, the, the little shorties or or uh, these alcohol containers, it hasn't risen to a problem where Captain Beckett and I have um, uh, had had an issue. So, um, no, we're we're not concerned about it right now. I will say, um, just in discussing with Captain Beckett. Um, that she has sent High V some pointed questions. I don't know exactly to who to who specifically, and they have not responded to her. Sure. Um, but uh, maybe maybe the applicant can refresh his memory with Captain Beckett. I ha I have not received anything, but I can certainly reach out to the captain directly tomorrow and just be like, here's here's a better email. I'm not sure where the miscommunication happened. Um, we. The short answer is we kind of work as a division underneath the Whitney Way. So while we are a standalone, the bosses, the, the headquarters, all the mail, all the bills, it comes from Whitney Way. So if she's trying to contact any sort of thing through there, it, it would be faster to reach me directly. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Alder Revere, do you have questions for Captain Hansen? No, I, my question was uh, asked and answered. Thank you. Okay. Um, am I right that this is the same strip mall where there's a Westfield Comics? Yes. Okay. I, I've i been there once or twice. <laughs> uh, I haven't been to that high V, but I mean, it certainly doesn't look like the, an area where people are hanging out outside. So for what that's worth. Um, Mr. Verbeck, do we have any other registrants to speak on this topic? We do not. All right. So, committee, we have a motion to grant the request to strike condition one and condition three from the license, and there is a second. Is there any further discussion of this motion? Alder Revere. Thank you. Well, my thought, uh, Chair, is that if we're going to dispense with one and three, which are the most significant of the five conditions, we might as well just remove all five conditions. It seems a little foolish to have a condition still on the license related to fortified wine, which isn't a big deal, I don't think, anymore. It was maybe a long time ago yeah. or more popular a long time ago in a condition about um, flavored malt beverages. I mean, obviously, you've changed your mind about those because the, the sure. like condition doesn't impact you. The conditions don't impact yeah. you. Sure. So it just seems silly to me if... If we are going to wipe this slate, we might as well wipe the slate clean instead of leaving these. It does disturb me a little that perhaps the applicants, I'm not making this personal, but anyway, the applicant perhaps never followed through on condition number five, which is disappointing if that was the case. But obviously the um, registrant before us, you know, we were not mm -hmm. in, in any way involved back then. So we, but we don't know for certain if a meeting occurred or did not occur six months after opening. Um, but in any event, I presume if there were problems, we would have heard about them from from uh, Captain Beckett um, sure. by way of Captain Hansen tonight. So, so even though our agenda only uh, is talking about conditions one, two, and three, I think it is safe to assume that anyone who would would have had a concern about removing the other conditions would have had concerns about one and three. Uh, so I believe so. Perhaps we could check in. I don't know if, since uh, those of us in person, except for you, maybe Chair can't see who all is in Zoom, except whose faces are on the screen. Is is Assistant City Attorney McReynolds with us tonight? And Assistant City Attorney Zillavi, I see Amber. Hi, Amber. Yes, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. So, so I'd, I'd ask her if she has any concerns with open 
meetings law or notice issues if we do perhaps consider removing all conditions tonight. Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, this was noticed as a change of license condition. And although there is the specifics um, listed about one and three and two, um, because it's noticed as a change of license condition, I do think it would be okay. And furthermore, I, it might be different if, for example, there were a condition about a bar being open till a certain time and also about having outdoor seating. And they wanted to change one of those. I think that that would be a meaningfully different thing where somebody might have had an opinion about one but not the other, whereas these are appropriately a bundle. Cool. Thank you, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. Uh, Ms. Westra, what question do you have? And also... Oh I was just going to say that I agree with Alder Revere. Um, when they initially came forward, I was against any of these conditions, so I'm very I happy remember. to support removing them. Mr. Bruchak? Yep, I'm okay. With also comfortable. So we have, uh, now our motion is to strike all conditions from the license. Uh, Chris, do you have any concerns with that? I do not. Okay. Uh, committee, any further discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. The conditions on this license are stricken. I hope you have a good night. Thank you. Congratulations. You're welcome. Okay, Jim, are there any others that you would like us to take out of order? No. And have you captured everything you need on that item? Yeah. I suppose to the previous question about out of order, I would say, and I, and I told you this, but uh, items uh, three and I'm not sorry, not three, uh, two and seven, uh, two and six um, require interpretation. We do have an interpreter who will be in person, but they are currently doing a, a, another panel inside the building, and they'll be back around seven. Um, they did call the applicant before the meeting to let them know that, so uh, we'll skip past those ones until that time. Sounds good to me. In that case, let us go to items 10, 11, and 12, which are changes of licensed conditions for the Essen House, the Up North, and the Comeback Inn. Do we have a registrant here for these items? Uh, Bob Worm, registered. This Bob? Yeah. Up, come on up. Before you start, uh, Assistant City Attorney Zellevee, do you have a question? I, I don't have a question, but I was going to maybe give an overview of this. I, that would be great. I had Thank to leave you. the last meeting early, and I did watch it. And so I'd like to save everybody some pain by just giving an overview of the situation that sounds delightful. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We were counting on that from you tonight. <laughs> and I've also um, given Jim Verbeck um, three licenses for Essen House um, with proposed language changes on them. Again, just to make things a little bit easier. Um, so the reason for making these changes. Um, I, I don't know if everybody knows, but back in, I think maybe it was 2013 when some, some things were approved by the ALRC and conditions put on the license. Um, they were put on the license contingent upon a major, alt and appro major alteration approval by the plan commission. And that approval never happened. So, and I was unaware that it did not have, I think everybody was pretty much unaware that it didn't happen. So the Essen House was operating um, contrary to what they were really allowed to do, but it didn't come to anybody's attention until 
<clears throat> neighbors were complaining about the frequency of the outside music and the volume, et cetera, et cetera. And that got the parties meeting. And that's when we discovered that the plan commission approval from 2013 never happened. And that's why um, Mr. Worm had to go back to the plan commission with a new letter of intent, um, putting forth what he wanted to do. And <clears throat> while the plan commission in January did not grant him exactly what he was looking for, um, they did grant approvals. And I don't know if Jim has sent the licenses with the language on them around to you. I did send it. I don't know if they've received it yet. Yeah, or I did at least. Um, so those conditions represent what the plan commission and approved and what Essen House and Come Back In and Up North Bar can lawfully do on their outdoor premises. You'll see that they're, they still have their premise, premises defined for each of the establishments. But in terms of the outdoor area, what the plan commission approved was basically for what I will say is the complex. And, and um, the language that I have added to those licenses reflect what that authorization is. And I did I found this on the web. Oops, sorry, Siri. Um, I did send that language to Mr. Worm yesterday. And I heard back this morning that he was he was okay with it. So it shouldn't be a surprise to him this evening. Excellent. That is a very useful summary. So I want to make sure that I understand correctly. So if we were to have a motion from somebody on the committee to apply this uh, language that uh, Mr. Verbick just sent to us, what we would be doing is making the alcohol license conditions match the plan commission conditions? That's correct. And if we, I'm not suggesting we should do this. Nobody, I don't think we should do this. I'm asking so that I can understand. If we wanted to do something more restrictive than this, we would be putting restrictions on top of what the plan commission has already restricted and what the city presumably has basically agreed with the operator would be reasonable. That is correct. And if we made the alcohol license be more permissive than this set of uh, conditions, we would create a confusing situation where the license holder still wasn't allowed to do those things because of the plan commission, but the alcohol license would not reflect that. So he still wouldn't be able to do it. It would just look like that on the alcohol license and it could be confusing. Right. And he would be in violation of the plan commission and they could that I mean, ultimately, they could revoke the whole thing. So, makes sense. Thank you very much, uh, committee. Does sure. anyone have any other any other questions for Assistant City Attorney Zellaby? Excellent. Thank you again very much, uh, Mr. Bruchon. Alder, Alder uh, I think, or um, my question is: Am I right to assume that it's probably the easiest for you? Attorney Zillavi, if the conditions match up perfectly, should something happen down the road? That's correct. And it just, it makes it clear for everybody what, what is allowed and what the expectation is. Uh, let's see. Ms. Carter, do you have a question for Assistant City Attorney Zillavi? I do. So with the changes on this license, then we are looking at uh, Essence House, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, coming back every year to get these um, one through five approved. 
they have to be approved by the plan commission annually um, correct i will say I, go ahead and, and go ahead my understanding is there's there's a thought that um that this may be the last summer of this activity because of development plans. It has also okay. frequently been the practice of this committee for the first year, two years, maybe three years of events like this to make them year specific. And then after a, a couple of successful years, potentially changing it to not refer to a specific year and the dates. And so how would we know, since you said they were supposed to look at it in 2013 and that never happened, how are we going to know that they're looking at it, approving it, and then coming to us? Because now there are several city staff that are painfully aware of the issue. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. All right. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Any further questions for Assistant City Attorney Zellavi? Uh, Ms. Farley. Yeah, so I have a question. And if, if I'm, I guess I'll start and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I understood that um, with the license premises, we couldn't have overlapping areas of um, like licensing. You can't take alcohol from one premise to another. Okay. But that's for him to figure out how he's going to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Farley. Any further questions for Assistant City Attorney Zillavi? All right. Thank you again, uh, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I have a, a question. Go for it. Is there any, I'm trying to find it, I don't know if I see it here, but is there any restriction on the how loud the music can be uh, between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m.? There is not, and it, it's always problematic to put a decibel level on because of all kinds of legal issues with measuring it and how would you prove it at trial and what we typically use as a standard is unreasonable noise. So if the police department gets a complaint, they go to the scene of the complaint and then they make a judgment as to whether or not they think the volume is unreasonable given the totality of the circumstances. Okay. Thank you for that answer. And, and if you may, uh, if, if I can share, I just want to add a short comment um, uh, that when the officer shows up and determines what's reasonable, that might be a different judgment than, than the neighbor who's been there all summer. Um, whenever this music is playing over and over and over again, what was reasonable on the first day of the music may feel unreasonable to the neighbor on the last day. Um, that's the more challenging problem, I think, than we are here to solve today, but I just wanted to put that out there. Thanks for uh, everyone's work on this. Uh, this issue. Ms. Westra. Uh, you're muted, Amy. Sorry, I would really like to hear from the applicant. We've had a lot of discussions sure. and questions that should have gone after we heard from the applicant. I, I was giving people the opportunity to ask Assistant City Attorney Zellavi questions yep. uh, right after she presented what she did. Uh, if there are no other questions, the next thing is going to be hearing from the applicant. All right, Robert, the floor is yours. Well, you're saying that since 2013, I was n not in the right. In 2013, when I got the volleyball okayed from you, planning department, because I'm under a PUD, they, they told me they could take care of it right there and didn't have to go to the Planning Commission. So I thought I was in the right with a PUD. So I did not intentionally or anything like that. I was under, because I still have a PUD in that area. 
I, okay. to, to give you comfort, I don't think anybody, no one has suggested any sort of punitive action. Well, some or, of the neighbors think so. Okay. They were insinuated that I was doing everything illegal. We, so I just wanted to say, fair from enough. my standpoint, in 2013, I thought I wasn't right because I was told by the planning department that Understood. they okayed it with the PUD. So the... Um, go ahead. So then on the, on the what we're trying to do here, I think, is to please the planning department more than anything else for, for my situation. I mean, during all my thoughts and stuff here, the, the planning commission staff wrote this once when they went to... Staff continues to believe that the limited term of the approval might discourage the applicant from perpetuating the use and maintenance of the rare large surface parking lot present in the central downtown area in favor of a redevelopment. So they made these new rules to make for sure that I don't use my parking lot any more than they want me to use it. I mean, I had six events outside since 1983. That was the, when I first got my liquor license in 83. I got six events that I could use the same as they do on Regent Streets. And that's what I have, I've worked off of. Mm -hmm. Now the planning department are, wants to only use two events. Well, that's, I guess they can do that. Outdoor music for the volleyball and stuff like that. We were okay till 10 o'clock. We never received a complaint either for the six events or the volleyball from the neighbors. I haven't at least. You know, this, these new rules are mostly put up by the planning department. Okay? When we, do, when we did get the loud music outside, or I should say the extra music outside, that was during COVID and after COVID. And it just got out of hand. Because during that time, you couldn't have music inside. You had to have the six-foot tables and stuff like that. And it, it, it just, I never realized until we had a neighborhood meeting that one of the biggest concerns was too much music outside, not so much the loudness. Because we had music outside since, 1990, since 1995. Okay. So that, that is your time. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So what we have on our agenda is that you are requesting to allow Sunday and Monday music outside as per the planning commission. So this, so as you heard when I asked the question of Assistant City Attorney Zillavi, the set of things that we, the ALRC, can do tonight is fairly small. Realistically, we can either tell you that you can do the same things that the plan commission did, or we could say that you could do less than that. Are you requesting that the ALRC give you the same uh, set of permissions that the Plan Commission did? Yes, I really don't have any alternative. Excellent. Um, committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? Ms. Farley. Um, I understand that this is very frustrating, and I, I hope you don't think that the question I'm going to ask is, um, to get all muddled up in, you know, all of the difficulties of local bureaucracy. But um, I am curious about the um, uh, regulation that we have uh, to not uh, carry alcohol between locations. It seems like there is a plan uh, to set up um activities between some of the locations that are listed. And so I'd like to understand your strategy for complying with that. Does that, make, does that question make sense? Yeah, is that, okay, is that for me? Um, we don't have too much of a bigger problem with that just because we have staff at each location. So if a person comes out in his or her later hose or dental, they're at the Essen House location and they get to drink from them. If they come out up north, they don't have any cocktail area, so they have to go in the bar and get their own drinks. So we, we generally, I, I see very, very little of people crossing over the lines. I, and I might be able to help with this, Catherine. So Robert, each of those establishments has its own outdoor seating area. Correct. Right? And the music is 
what's in the parking lot, making music go toward those out. All three, areas. all three establishment. Yes. Okay. Does that does that make it make more sense? So the the um, patrons are not in the parking lot. The music is in the parking lot. And the patrons are at the individual locations. They're at, they're in the individual thirty um, seat cafe area, as we call it. Okay. And the thirty seats are divided up, and there's barriers okay. in between each one. Gotcha. Thank you. Excellent, uh, Mr. Bruchak. Thanks for coming back, uh, Robert. Um, did, so you heard the question I w or the comment I made after asking my question to the Assistant City Attorney about noise and music. Um, uh, are you, if there's an issue with the neighbors, um, I trust you're going to work with them, right? Even if the say, on the first night the police show up because someone called, and the officer says, "Well, it's not unreasonable." Um, but then the next week and the week after, a neighbor says, you know, it wasn't unreasonable, but it's, it's, it's lasting so long, and can you turn it down a little bit? Are you going to show goodwill and cooperation with the neighbor, or are you going to say, well, the police said it was fine, so that's where we're keeping it? That's always a good question. <laughs> I wish I could answer that perfectly. I will say during the, during the time when all these neighbors complained and we got all the police there, Never once did we ever get a citation for loud music. It was more the idea that the neighborhood was, I hate to say it, was told by the planning committee, by zoning, to call the police in case there was music. And they called, and the police came, and they had to, and they had to take care of it. Eventually, there were so many police calls, um, the attorney asked us just to stop the music, which is the best way to stop police calls. Now, if this happens again, these same people are going to do it. I, I mean, the, there's a couple neighbors that are very persistent, and they're going to call. It's as simple as that. And who's going to enforce it? That's the sad part. The Planning Department Commission gave these rules, but now they're going to ask you guys to enforce it. Well, we're not enforcing any any rules. We 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 help make recommendations at Common Council. Okay, about then. So I so I understand then that the enforcement is going to be done by the Planning Commission or Planning Department. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of it on a different level. I just want to... Oh, am I going to... Oh, your, your question was more about, am I going to cooperate? Yeah, outside oh, of the okay. official channels and things. Of course things we be, will. Okay. And of I, course I, we will. I, I expected that you would answer that way. But, uh, yeah. so, so thank you for um, uh, showing, coming tonight and for what you do in our, in our neighborhood. Well, after 42 years, I kind of thought I'd be respected a little better, but thank you. All right. uh, Bob, I have a question for you. What's that? Bob, I have a question for you. Sure. And I don't think I've ever disrespected you, have I? No. Thank you. Even when we... <laughs> yeah, even okay. what? Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, even when what? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to confirm something that I don't think I heard yet. So you heard Assistant City Attorney Zillavi say that she has forwarded you her proposed language that mirrors the plan commission disposition letter, right? I just wanted to confirm you have all that. Yes. And your management team will have all that. Yes. So there's no confusion. And the one thing that I do recall was confusing when your daughter joined us at last month's meeting was the issue of volleyball and she wanted the volleyball hours extended. So it's still a big issue. But I just wanted to make sure that you knew and she knows and everyone knows that according to this language that the plan commission adopted that we're likely to adopt momentarily here, volleyball must cease by 9 p.m. So is that your understanding as well? That's what I that read That is here. my understanding. Okay. Can I explain something, though, about well, sure. volleyball? Sure. We had to, because as a referring said, we had to have a sign-up for volleyball. We have 50 teams. They signed up within a three-hour period. That's how much demand it is. There's a lot of demand downtown for things for these residents to do. And to have Marsha Rummel suggest that we go from 10 to 9, not because of complaints, but only because the 9 o'clock was the average deadline. That was the reason why it went to 9 o'clock. And I think that's really unfair to the residents, as much as, much as cutting out for the volleyball team. Thank I you. appreciate that. Thank you. I just want to make sure that... No, we'll have to work with it. You and your team know that it's 9 o'clock for this yeah. year. And I'm sure if it goes five minutes over, 
You will hear about it. <laughs> well, good luck with your redevelopment. I know it's bittersweet for you. Uh, committee. Go a little faster. Well, <laughs> I've been trying to do it for two years and I haven't got it. Well, you were at Urban Design Commission tonight and Landmarks Commission a couple nights ago on Monday night. I believe that this is not ALRC business, so <laughs> let us move along. Uh, are there any other registrants for this item, Jim? Uh, there are not. Committee, what's your pleasure? Ms. Westra. Ms. Westra. Mute is my, not my friend today. Uh, move approval of the three licenses as written. So as... Uh, Drafted by drafted Assistant by the City Attorney Zillowy. Yep. Okay. Your motion is there. A second. I'll second if you need one. Second from Alder Verveer. Any discussion? Hearing none. Is there any dissent? Hearing none. Motion carries. Items. Give me a moment here. 10, 11, and 12 are uh, granted with the pro conditions proposed by the city attorney's office. All right, next up, item 15, change of licensed premises for Madison Children's Museum. Do we have a registrant, pardon me, here for this item? Um, I do not see anyone registered for this item. Dave. I did. I, Wait. I, have, I have the list in front of me, too, Jim. Well, I'm sorry. Yep, I'm two, sorry. There are there two are people two. registered. Yep. Uh, Megan Cannon and uh, David. Let me see if they're in. Zoom. Uh, David. Dave Heidi. Heidi is in Zoom and has his hand up. All right. Um, guys, I forgot. I need to... Um, uh, Excuse myself from this license. Recuse, Recuse myself. Recuse yourself. Yes. <laughs> Noted. Noted. Yes. Thank you. Jim, have you got that? Yes. Excellent. All right. Uh, Dave, can you please introduce yourself and tell us what you are proposing? Yeah. Hi. Can you guys hear me okay? We can. Okay. I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to give you camera or not. I don't know how to give it to you if you wanted it, but I'm Chef Dave. Um, and I hold the liquor license at the Madison Children's Museum. And um, it's actually pretty cool. This year, the Madison Children's Museum is hosting um, a huge uh, children's conference. And um, for all of these different children's um, museums. Um, and I got to speak at it um, last year and when I was in New Orleans. Um, and now it's coming here. So they're having an event. We are... We hold the liquor license at the Children's Museum. And um, what we're looking to do is there's gonna be a small outdoor space. We're not looking at serving alcohol, um, like having a bartender out there, but we are looking at having it be possible to have the um, alcohol brought out into that area. And that's the reason for this meeting. And also Megan, I believe, is either on yeah, Zoom she, or in she's person. She's here, Dave. She's here okay. with us in person. Um, and she is with the Children's Museum putting it on. So I'm here more as the registered agent of the liquor license. And she's more on the like planning of everything. So she might be able to even answer some more um, some more of the questions than I'm able to. But that is the overall gist of what we're looking for. All right. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Ms. Farley. I guess point of information based off of the um, application, it sounds like you're looking for the uh, change of premises for a single event. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would just like to understand that. And maybe this is a question for Jim. Um, if we approve this change of premises, this is not just for the single event. This would be for the prom premise in ge or premises well, in it, general. It can, we can put a specific date on it. Yeah, we've had that where uh, someone's had a uh, margarita fest or something like that. And we've had like a oh, no weekend or something like that where the premises temporarily extends. Um, we write that into the license and then it's very clear that it's for this date or for this weekend. And that's the only extension of that temporary premises. 
Does okay. that answer your question? It, it does. I, I also have a question for the applicant, if that's okay. By all means. Um, and so I'd like to understand, sorry, I'm just like looking at this picture included in the application. Um, wh where exactly is the outdoor space on the um, property of the Children's Museum? So it, it it extends into the parking lot that we have received permission from the city to have um, a partial street closure there. So it'll be along the sidewalk of the Children's Museum. Um, that'll be a tented area. We will have a barricade along the side, and we will have security at this event as well. I don't Can know you if that introduce helps. yourself, please? Sorry, I'm Megan Cannon um, here on behalf of the Children's Museum. Okay. Um, and is that agreement with the city in writing? Yes, it is. Yes. Excellent. It's a street use permit. Yeah. I figured. But yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Farley, do you have further questions? Um, I do not. All right, committee, what other questions do you have for the applicants? All right. Uh, Mr. Verbeck, do we have any other registrants for this item? We do not. Committee, oh, Ms. Farley. Sorry, I do have an, another question. Um, is, is there any interest from the applicants for the change of premises to extend beyond the event? It couldn't really because they wouldn't have control of the space beyond the event. Okay. My, I guess my understanding was that the space included both public, um, like the street use permit, and then there's additional space that wasn't currently covered, but maybe I misunderstood. Not to my knowledge. We are just trying to extend to allow guests to bring their drinks into that tented extended space. Thank you. Any further questions? All right, committee, what is your pleasure? I move to grant. Your motion to grant from Alder Verveer, second from Mr. Bruchak. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item six, 15 is granted. Uh, congratulations, Dave and Megan. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Good luck with this. Thank you. Very exciting. You're bringing yeah. almost 1,000 people to town. Yes. Thanks a lot. All right. Next up is item 16, which is a change of licensed. No, gosh. 16 is a licensed transfer for Faded Kitchen. Do we have a registrant here for this item? Uh, we do have a registrant. Um, I would say we should take this up with 18, um, even though they're not the same entity. Um, I think the applicant for 18 can give you sort of a backstory yet on that. Um, but the, the, short, the short thing is um, the applicant for 18, his daughter was sole proprietor that controls 16, and they were going to move and then have a new license. But whether it, it's approved to move, the new license would just take over that space anyways. And I think the ultimate plan would be to have the... Um, the current license surrendered to the new license when it becomes available. So I would, I would recommend taking them both up together because it's sort of the same father-daughter pairing. Okay. But we can certainly do that. Um, can you just explain that one more time? Sure. So <clears throat> uh, the, the... Is this all about saving $10,000 on reserve license fee? Is that... Kind of, but chain. it's also a change because the, um, the, the Faded Kitchen is a sole proprietorship um, run by uh, Dominique Johnson, um, and and she was looking to move from the space that's licensed on Fordham over to this Dempsey Road, um, and then uh, this new license, I believe, uh, the LLC, uh, her father, Samuel Johnson, is one of the members in it, um, is going to then take over 
the, with this new LLC, uh, and then the old license, the faded kitchen license, will eventually, I believe, be surrendered then to this uh, licensee. So for their, they're both going to be for the same exact location. Um, so they they weren't sure whether or not they had to get the license transferred first before applying for this new license, um, and so they had both applications sort of sitting out there. Oh, and I so think I get it. So now this new application is now so, submitted. So it's it's what Alder Revere said. It's eighteen is the new place that they want to open, and sixteen is so that they can move the old one over and save the money. Yeah, I, mean, I think they were. Giving, I'm, not, yep. I'm not saying that's remotely unreasonable. That's what I would do. Yeah, and I think they were given legal advice that they had to move it first and then get this new license approved. And what I said to them is, I think it's irrelevant where the old license is. Is that you can have that regular license surrendered to anyone, regardless of the location, and as long as it's approved by the committee and the, and the common council to be at the location, it doesn't matter where the old license was. Okay, then I agree wholeheartedly. Let's take up item 18, which sounds like the one with interesting decisions to make, and then we can come back and dispose of 16. So do we have a registrant here for 18? Uh, Samuel Johnson is registered and in Zoom. All right, so Samuel, um, please don't worry about anything about the license transfer. We will talk about that later. What we're on right now is IT, item 18, the new license for Boss Lady Cafe at 1 uh, Dempsey Road. So can you please introduce yourself and tell us about your proposed business? Hi, I'm Sam. Uh, Samuel, we, it, the thing on the screen said that you were talking, so I th don't think you're muted, but we couldn't hear you. Can you see if you can be louder, maybe speak more directly into the microphone? Yes, can you hear me? Hello? It's, st it's still a little bit quiet. If you can be louder, that would be great, but we can hear you. Yes, I'm here, uh, trying to be as loud as possible, but I'm not, I think I'm being heard there and what? I'm not sure if it's me or it's my phone or what. Well, well, we'll just we'll be quiet and we'll listen to you. So, uh, introduce yourself, please, and tell us about the business you're proposing on uh, Dempsey Way. My name is Samuel Johnson. Um, I'm interested in opening a coffee shop and a daiquiri shop together that would supply coffee and daiquiri. It's a cafe. Uh, we would be supplying food, and uh, it would basically seat uh, about 20, uh, 25 people. It's not a very big location, but I think we will do well there. All right. Thank you. Committee, what questions do you have? Go ahead, Samuel. No, I'm sorry. I didn't say anything. Say again? I was just listening to you. Okay, cool. Uh, committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? Uh, while people are thinking of potential questions, Jim, uh, are there any other registrants for item 18? Uh, there are not. All right. Committee, what is your pleasure? Mr. Bruchak. Um, Thanks. Uh, what kind of food do you plan on serving? Uh, it would be mostly salads, uh, pasta, uh, uh, pasta dishes, and uh, tacos. Thank you. No further questions from me. All right. Uh, Ms. Farley? Sorry, I was muted. Um, I noticed that there was not a business planner sample menu included in the application or seller's permit. I'm sorry. I did not. Uh, I didn't. Actually, I did realize it needed to be in there. It was just so much paperwork. I think I overlooked it. But uh, those are the plan items that we plan on selling. 
Uh, the food menu will be a wide variety of different things. Uh, we more kind of pride ourselves on our coffee and the different coffees we will be serving. And I think that will be a big hit. But the food menu is a small menu, but they're very important things to us. Sure. Um, I, I think I would just say if we do move forward with approving this tonight, I would want us to have that information then included. But it, it sounds like you've provided all of the context we need. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Farley. Uh, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds, you don't have your hand up, but you did turn your camera on. Is there something you'd like to share with us? Uh, yes, I just had a couple of questions. Um, I noticed on the application you wrote um, that 25% of your business will be other have you explained what the other is? Mr. Johnson, I I had just asked you a question and I, I think your your mic is off. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Okay, the other 25% will be the coffee. As I said, I think the coffees will probably take up more than 25%, but we were just guessing right now. Uh, we do have a, quite a variety of coffee and coffee items, and they will take up the other part. Uh, we also have the food and also the taxes. Okay. And then my other question is, uh, are you the only, you're the sole owner of this LLC? Actually, it will be me and my daughter, uh, Dominique Johnson. Uh, she will also be helping and chiming in, but not as much as before. Okay, so on your application, you're listed as the only owner and the only member of the LLC. But tonight, are, are you saying that Dominique Johnson is going to be a member of the LLC? Uh, that's planned on in the future. Uh, I just basically set it up to get started. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. Uh, committee, what other questions do you have for the applicant? Uh, Alder Verveer. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, very good. I know we had a, perhaps a correction, a connection issue. C can you just explain then the the role of, and if you did, if you already mentioned it, I apologize. Is the liquor agent also proposed liquor agent someone that? Is in your family? Uh, that's another one of my daughters here, sir. So, the, so I'm sorry. Is it is Dominique Johnson? That's my daughter. And that's who. And that's who at some point will be joining the limited liability company. Yes. Uh, Uncle Abbott is my daughter also. Uh, just a different last name. Abington. Yes. That's who uh, is also added on there. So it's two different daughters that also will both be involved in the business? Actually, it's a family business. Uh, I actually have four daughters. All my daughters will be involved in it. Uh, that's why it's called Boss Lady. They came up with the name. Uh, it's something that they're very interested in. And kind of a family thing. We kind of work together. And so one of the one of the daughters in your application will be the liquor agent, correct? Yes. Yes. And and so I'm sure that that was some of the paperwork that you were just mentioning earlier. Yes, sir. But in, going to our attorney's question about then Dominique, 
are you are you saying at a later date she would join you would amend your LLC with the Wisconsin Department of Financial Institutions or she currently is a member of the LLC uh, she's, kind of, she's currently pregnant and she's working on having kids uh, in the future we had talked about her basically taking over at some point um, it's more a uh, business is going to be for my kids not exactly a business for me, but it's a family business. We're all going to work in it together. And with me being the father and the lead on the thing, I figured that I would take the front step. Well, it certainly is great and there, that, that you're having a family business here. Our concern is that on the application, we need to have the list and background checks completed for every member of the LLC. Right now, I'm the only member of the LLC. Right now, you are the only member of the LLC on file with the state of Wisconsin? Yes. Okay, great. Then we don't have to worry about that tonight. And then my other area question, sir, was about the capacity. In your um, initial testimony, you said it was a capacity of 25. And on the application, it's, it states you're asking for a capacity of 20. Since you completed the application, have you had a chance to confirm with the building inspection division or the fire department as to what the best capacity will be so that we can consider that number tonight? No, sir, I have not. Uh, we were just guessing at the number of seats that we were going to put in there, and it came to roughly 20, 25 seats, and that's why we went off that number. We have not got an official number of uh, the building department, but it's not a very big building. So we don't want to crowd a bunch of people in. So we want to kind of keep it small. It, I mean, I think even if they give us bigger numbers, we're not interested in having bigger. Yes, it's it's yeah, it's obviously a very small capacity compared to what we're used to here at our committee. In fact, I noticed there was an application for this exact same location that was filed with our committee last year that ended up not moving forward for a, a, a beauty salon that wished to have uh, an alcohol license and they listed the capacity of 26. So do you think we should, if we grant the license tonight, we should say 20 is the capacity or 25 or what are, you, what are, your, what are your current thoughts? I think 25 would be the safest bet. Uh, I think that's more reasonable. Uh, as I said, it is a small business building, and I want to be on the safe side. If it ends up being 20, I'll take 20. But, you know, best ask for 25, and if I only have room for 20, that's what I'm going to do. All right, very good. And just so you understand, if if you, you all move forward and the city licenses you, you, you we can't, the, the number that we grant you um, can't be uh, any higher than what the building inspection and fire department officials um, designate. Is that understood? Yes, I understand that. That's yeah. why I said we should just go for the 25. If they grant us 25, we'll take the 25, but it's better to go for the 25 than go for the 20 and then find out when it's available for 25. I agree. That sounds good to me. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alder Revere. Ms. Carter. Thank you. My question was answered, although it was quite confusing, but somehow I got the answer. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Committee, what other questions do you have for the applicant? All right. Thank you, Samuel. Mr. Verbecker, are there any other registrants for this item? There are not. Committee, what is your pleasure? Um, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. Hi, um, thank you, Chair. Since I am so kind of new to this and learning about this, have we, um, Jim, do you consider an application complete when it comes in without a business plan and a sample menu? Yes. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it is items that we request, um, but it's we haven't always had full submissions from everyone regarding those two things. Um, I sort of think of it as not a, a need need, but it would be helpful to have so to understand the scope of the business and what you're trying to do. I think a lot of the things in the business plan are ultimately captured on the application, but it helps to give a little more context if they can submit it. Um, and then if, if they're not submitting a sample menu, if they can at least disclose at the meeting, I think that's, that's fine if the committee's fine with it. I think the sample menu is, is ultimately we use it to, to make sure that they say they're going to be a restaurant and then you find out they're only offering frozen pizzas and nachos and that's clearly not what they're trying to be. But uh, mm -hmm. if they can disclose that what they're going to be selling, that that's something you can kind of hold them to. Okay, thanks, Jim. Yep. All right, uh, Ms. Carter. Thank you. And Jim, I do understand what you were saying, but uh, when it's time to make a motion, I would like to see them uh, submit those things to the clerk's office as part of the motion. Thank you. All right. Committee, what is your pleasure? Alder Verveer. I move to grant with the capacity of 25 persons. Your motion from Alder Verveer to grant with the capacity of 25 persons. Second from Ms. Westra. Discussion. Uh, Ms. Carter. <coughs> Ms. Carter, you are on mute. With that motion, I would like for the applicant to submit those two items that we previously discussed. Uh, Alder Verveer, are you interested in including that in your motion? Yeah, I have no objection to that. All right, Ms. Westra, do you have so any concerns? Would the assumption would be that that would be submitted by the applicant prior to the Common Council meeting? Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right, very good. Uh, is there any further discussion? Alder Verveer. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I suppose we could wait. I was just, <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll hold. By all means. Any further discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item, I'm going to look at this before I start saying it to be sure. Item 18 is granted with a capacity of 25 people and with the stipulation that the uh, applicant shall provide the clerk's office with a menu and business plan prior to the council meeting at which this will be voted on. Um, Jim, will you, uh, since we've had a little bit of audio trouble, will you reach out to the applicant and make sure he knows what he needs to get us? Sure. Excellent. So uh, item 18 is granted. So Mr. Verbeck, next up is item 15, which is the change of licensed premises. Item 16, uh, this is going to be all night, isn't it? Uh, the license transfer for faded kitchen. So given the the their desired outcome, which is faded kitchen will not be operating anymore and uh, Boss Lady Cafe gets one of those uh, less expensive licenses. Is there any, do we actually need to act on item 16 in order for them to get what they want? No. Okay. So, committee, what questions do you have about the conversation that Mr. Verbeck and I just had? Uh, Alder Verveer. Thank you. So I note there are no registrants for this agenda item. Most importantly, the license holder, Ms. Johnson, isn't hasn't registered. I don't know if maybe she's with her father or not, and but but is not registered. So with that said, could you perhaps repeat what you might have said at, in your introduction, Deputy City Clerk Verbeck? That is it. Your understanding from Ms. Johnson that she's 
willing to, if based on our action we just took with the other license application that this can be, this would be ripe for placing on file without prejudice tonight, or are we gonna refer it yet again? We've already referred it many times since last year, as you know. Yeah, I, I would think we can place it on file. Um, they did, there is a, um, a transfer of ownership form that was submitted with the Lyric Live LLC application um, signed by Dominique Johnson that said she intends to surrender the license upon their issuance for the new license. Okay, so then with that said in your assurance, I'm, I'm sure I would move to place on file without prejudice. All right. Item 16. Your motion from Alder Revere. Is there a second? Second from Ms. Farley. All right. So we have a motion and a second to place item well, looks 16 like on file without prejudice. Some city attorney Assistant McReynolds city might attorney have McReynolds. legal advice for us. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't think it's a problem to place it on file, but if this is a transfer, I am or however this is happening, I am still concerned and concerned for the committee about like a lot of a lot of gaps in information here. And I am wondering if Faded Kitchen was even opened as a business um, and how long it, it operated and how long when it ceased operating. So um, I think it's I think it's okay to place this on file, but um, I have to admit, even I'm confused about how this is happening. So, um, go ahead, please, Chair. While the entire situation may indeed be confusing, we're, what we have on our agenda with item 16 is one tiny little bit of it, which is a an application to move the license from one place to another, which... It, my understanding is is not necessary. So while there could potentially be problems with the situation in general, I don't think there are with this aspect of it. And whatever problems there could be, I don't even I think that they're administrative things that the clerk's office will be handling, right? That the the surrender and use of that license here. Yeah. So um, just to drill in a little bit more. So if some hypothetical person had a concern about the operating status or lack thereof of Faded Kitchen, they would need to make a complaint about that. And to my knowledge, no one has done so. And absent such a complaint, there are is nothing on which we could act even if we wanted to. Got it. I will say right. that this, I think this application, the, uh, the initial application, the license approved in 2018, I want to say. Um, I, I can't say I visited to know that they were in operation in Fordham Avenue. Um, I do know that during the pandemic, they had indicated to us that they weren't going to be open as a couple businesses had done so. Um, and so um, obviously the city has has the means to um, uh, uh, revoke a license for being unused. Uh, we sort of let that slide a little bit during the pandemic for, for obvious reasons. Um, and I know that as we came out of the pandemic, um, they indicated that they were not at that location, but they were looking for a new location, which I think is ultimately this one. It did take a little bit, and I think they're here, and now they're trying to not do it under the same sole proprietorship, but rather this new LLC. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, no problem. All right. So uh, on item 16, we have a motion to place on file without prejudice and a second. Is there any further discussion of item 16? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, item 16 is placed on file without prejudice. Mr. Verbeck, are you uh, missing any information you need on that one? I'm not. 
Okay. Um, do we have the people that we need to handle items two and six at this time? Um, that's a good question. I do not see anyone register for either of those items. Then let's carry on and we can jump back to that when we get a chance. Ms. Farley? Um, point of privilege, I need to step away for a moment. Okay. Uh, and since Mr. Bruchuk did also, I think that we are momentarily losing quorum. So oh, we're, we're okay. We still, we have six actually. So we're, we're doing okay. Amazing. That's great. Okay. So let's move on to item 19. Uh, new uh, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. Hi there. Thank you, Chair. We've been asked to check in every once in a while with um, committee members who are not on video or only by phone just to make sure that they are there for purposes of quorum. All right. Thank you. And it, that's the only other person, right? That's That would be on the phone? Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Council. All right. Item 19, new license application for Viceroy Indian at 7475 Mineral Point. Do we have a registrant here for this item? Uh, let's see. We do. Uh, Interjet Car is, I believe, in Zoom and registered to speak. All right. Uh, Interject, can you please introduce yourself and tell us about your proposed business? <coughs> you should see a prompt on your screen to unmute. Or if you're on your phone, I think it's star six. Oh, there he is. Are you there? It looks like you are unmuted, Indrajit. Can you try saying something, please? Hmm. We're still not hearing you, so it could be that you're not muted in Zoom, but that you are on whatever device you're on, your computer, your phone. Can you make sure that the microphone actually has access to, oh, or we lose them? All right, let's uh, wait just a minute then. All right, they're back in the Zoom call. Now they need to unmute. Uh, they asked to unmute. You should see a prompt on your screen to unmute again. Oh, unmuted, good. Try saying something, please. We're still not hearing you. You might need to call in if you're trying to connect right now on a computer. Do we have anyone who's trying to call in now? Uh, 
one doesn't look like it. All right, Indigit, we're going to move on to another item on our agenda. Um, we will check in with you in a little bit and see if you've been able to get your audio working. So next up is item 20. Item 20 is a new license application for Nerd Haven at 203 Cottage Grove. Do we have a registrant here for this item? Yeah, John Corrales is here and in Zoom. Uh, John, can you please introduce yourself and tell us what you are proposing? Hello, can everybody hear me? We can. Am I visible or no? Not visible, but we can hear you, so that's fine. Okay. Um, my name is John Corrales. I am the co-owner of Nerd Haven Arcade at 203 Cottage Grove Road. And my proposal is we would like to start being able to just serve beer on our Thursday evening on our Thursday operating hours to help us improve sales and bring in more customers to our establishment. Excellent. Thank you. Committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? <clears throat> Ms. Westra. So, John, you're going to start with um, Thursday nights. Is that like pinball league night? Uh, no, ma'am. Thursday nights is our 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. evenings. Okay. We're only, we're only open for six hours. It would just be our normal operating day. Um, we would be doing sort of a Thirsty Thursday adult swim for the situation to only allow 21 and over people into the facility. Um, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, we are reserving for the young families and the little kids that we started out started out with and we've catered to. Um, but Thursday is, uh, we, we would like to plot an adult swim Thursday. Okay. All right, thank you, Ms. Westrad. Committee, what other, uh, Alder Knox? So, just um, what's the name of your business again? Our the the arcade here is named Nerd Haven Arcade. We okay. Are, we're, I'm sorry. Well, I, I guess, and you kept referencing swim. So, can you explain <laughs> that connection? I, I can. Am I, I, am I, I missing I, something? No, no, I didn't hear you correctly. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I can help with this miscommunication. Aldernox, okay. uh, Adult Swim is originally a reference to swimming pools that would have oh. uh, periods where it could only be adults who would be swimming. Sure. But people now use that as a way to refer to a thing where normally children are permitted or even encouraged, but for a limited time period is closed to children and only adults are there. Okay. Wrong term. I was just, wrong I was term. just trying to trying to yeah. get the overall what is your business you know what i'm saying so, yeah I didn't get that he doesn't piece. have a swimming pool he has a he has a video uh, arcade. yeah so <laughs> okay so i'm the, all right the, go the, ahead the, the business that we have here at 203 cottage grove road mm -hmm. we have the, the the city's largest pinball 133 okay. retro arcade games on free play cool mm -hmm. customers come to us uh, John, I, John yes. I, I think that uh, Alder Knox's question has been answered. He, he was just okay. making sure that there wasn't also a swimming pool there. Oh, so, no, no. No swimming well, pool. Well, and there. I was, yeah, yeah. And typically, is this this is a new business or, or no? I, I've been open for the past five years. We okay. opened in 2020. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't get out much, so I have oh, no idea right. what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. All right, committee, what other questions do you have for the applicant? Mr. Bruchak. So the idea is to turn people away on Thursdays between 3 and 9 if unless they have an ID that says they're 21 or older. Am I hearing that, Correct. that right? Correct. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it's fine with me. No, no further questions. All right. The committee, what other questions do you have for the applicant? Ms. Carter. Yeah, I, I just want to know, are you, since you're normally a family-oriented business, how are you advertising for your Thursday operation? Well, that people a, will will know, or I mean, as of yet, you're trying to boost business, so I'm just trying to figure out how sure, this is going to do it. Sure. Um. Well, let, let me let me fast forward. Let me give you the whole idea. For the past year, we've been cutting down on people bringing in carry-ins to our facilities, so we can start kind of training people that they can't do that here. Mm -hmm. As for have we been advertising that we, this is going to happen, we haven't because we haven't had the permission from the city to do so. Okay. Um, once we do receive the permission to do so, we are planning to make a large announcement across our social media everywhere. Oh, okay. That 70, that's Thursdays will be set aside for 21 and older and for those that would like to come in and have a beer while they're playing pinball. We've had countless customers come to us and ask us, when are we getting our beer license or liquor license? So we already know that there's a lot of people that will come to us. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that a lot of people will be excited once the message goes out. Okay. So we, 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 will, we will make the announcement if and when we get the opportunity and the approval. Okay, thank you very much. Not a problem. Right, thank you, Ms. Carter. Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. Thank you, Chair. Um, for the applicant, my question is only because it was not completed on the form for your application. Do you plan to have any live entertainment? Uh, no, we do not plan to have any live entertainment. We do not have any space for live bands or a stage here at the facility. Okay, and although you're starting on Thursdays, is it in your plan to expand um, serving alcohol at any other time? Um, our, our thoughts going into the future is yes, we would expand into Wednesday, but that depends on how long you want us to hold the license if approved before we start making changes but yes if we do go forward we would add wednesday as well okay and to the just a reminder to the committee that without any conditions um the business could um serve alcohol at any time regardless of you know what they're stating their intent does so just keep that in mind if you if you do want to restrict the sale of alcohol to any particular day or time Thank you very much. Alder right, Verveer. Thank you, Chair. Um, John, I have a, a question. Sim it's real simple. I don't believe you mentioned wine, but um, on your original application, you applied for a Class C wine license. Are, are you yes, applying are, uh, tonight? Are you asking for a Class B beer and a Class C wine license? No, sir. For tonight, I am just asking for the beer license. Originally, when I did the application, um, we were originally thinking to try to do a beer and wine kind of selection for our customers here. And it was brought to me that beer and wine could not be put together on the same license. So I left that alone and just said, I'll figure that out later. Let me just get the beer license out to start. And well, it, all it is is a separate license. So it, you, for another one hundred dollars annually, you you would be eligible for a Class C well wine license, which is I'm pretty sure a Class C wine license only applies to a restaurant. The actually, law just changed effective May Day. As oh, of May well, I was actually when I read this, I was excited that I was going to congratulate fact, you for being the very first non-restaurant. Class C wine license in the city of Madison. Oh wow! Um, it was I part of then, Act, Act seventy three that 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 um, did a wholesale review of our gosh, Chapter one twenty five of the statutes. Well, 
to be open. And you and actually honest, applied. Uh, you, your business plan discusses beer and wine, and you checked the box, Class C yes, wine. Yes, sir. But, but I, so sir, I didn't understand I'm, what I'm, happened. Well, I was I, when I was at the offices dropping off the papers, I was told that these two items could not be done together, and I was just told, go for the beer now, and wine would be figured out later. That's why it was like this. But so you, you received misinformation from the clerk's office in person? Yes, sir. Oh, that's too bad. Then, then I, I just want to be honest and say we had the 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 full idea of doing beer and wine um if we have to reapply or s pay another hundred dollars we would be open and willing to do that because that is the full plan did i ask deputy city clerk could you have your staff been trained yet on act 73 so that they know that classy wines are no longer restricted to restaurants uh, I don't know if that information's been passed along yet, but I'll make sure that it is. Do they read the DOR on tap newsletter, which I read religiously? I, not not as much as I do. I I, I do as well. But I think um, I think everyone on your team should get the newsletter. Yep, yeah, I very helpful. It is. Yep. So, uh, Assistant City Attorney, if I might chair, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds, is it fair to say that since the printed agenda only only states Class B beer that we it would be a not proper notice enough to also consider a Class C wine license tonight, despite that's what the application was for. I presume the legal notice was only for Class B beer. I'll double check, but okay. I think thank that's you, Jim. I think that's right, um, Alder Verveer. Um, I think that would be the the most prudent thing to do. Is to only consider Class B beer application this evening. Correct. Yeah. If as as the deputy city clerk is reviewing the legal notice in the newspaper, now if if for some reason it, Class C wine was included, would would your opinion change on that, or or is the what should be controlling the actual agenda? It only says beer. Okay. Never mind. So going back to then to the applicant. Thank you, Amber. Going back to the applicant then. Yeah, sorry about the confusion and so forth, the misinformation, our apologies. But if you wanted to appear tomorrow or whenever and and complete the fun application again and simply check Class C wine box, you could be with back with us next month and we get to do it all over again, only you wouldn't have to explain Adult Swim or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um for the for the forms and applications, would I have to come down to the clerk's office to receive them, or can I have them digitally sent to our... We'll have Jim team? answer that for you. Yeah, you could digitally send them, but we will need someone to come in to pick up the orange sign that has to go in there because it would have the, the new meetings schedule um, that they'd have to appear before. Um, I will say we, we don't typically do this, but given the fact that you did put a Class C wine in there and we missed it, um, I think we can waive the $100 publication fee for your next license to add it on there. Okay. In, in that vein, if I might, since the application actually mentions wine in several places, would, would you, could we even be so lenient as to say we have the application uh, already and, he, and maybe no paperwork yeah, I think, is required? I think that's fair. I think yeah. about this. Well, yeah, I think that's fair. Is uh, I have a question for the group. Is there um, the opportunity? I don't know when the applicant was planning on just beginning to serve um, alcohol. What is the the time um, range on the notification? And I'm wondering if we could uh, simply include this i think we're looking at setting up an ad hoc meeting for an, another application if we could have the notification go out and then include that in that meeting or is there not enough lead time for that does that make question make sense you need to publish a new legal notice right? yeah we do need to publish a new legal notice so if i mean if if the applicant wasn't planning to sell before um Mid-May, I mean, they could just, we could just refer this to next month and then we put a legal notice in before the next meeting. Um, but if they want to be serving 
Um, prior to that, I would say they can get this one issued and then we can use the new application that has the wine on there and then act on that next month. I, I guess my, my question is if this could be added to the agenda for the special meeting that we are looking to schedule. It could, depending on what it is and how soon I can get that publication put in the newspaper. So it's a possibility. <laughs> I, I, I did also have a question for the applicant, but I also see that Alder Knox has um, his hand raised. You're up, Ms. Farley. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, you, you had mentioned uh, previously that uh, you currently have um, uh, carry-in. I, I, I just want to, uh, can, uh, can we assume that um, with the granting of this license, uh, do you still plan to continue to have carry-in or that you are, will no longer have uh, carry-in for your patrons? So to explain clearly and to correct, for the past year, we've been cracking down on people doing carry-ins and we do not allow that. In fact, we have signs on our front door that says no outside uh, carry-ins allowed in the premises and we do enforce it hard and we have been enforcing it hard for the past year to train the people. Um, so as of right now, there's a zero tolerance for water bottles, anything that comes from outside. Thank you, John. Not a problem. All right. Mr. Verbeck, are there any other registrants for this item? Um, there are not. Ms. Westra? Ms. Westra? You muted. I'd like to make a motion if we're ready. Um, I'd like to move approval as is with no conditions. Second. All right. We've got a motion to grant item 20. And a second, uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, uh, motion carries. Item 20 is granted with no conditions. Uh, congratulations, uh, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll see you next month. At least virtually. Um, well, <laughs> for for I was just going to ask really quickly for the wine license. I'll, I will get all the information to do another meeting with you guys. Correct? Yeah, we can use the this current application and then just go off that, and then I'll let you know when you can come pick up the orange sign. Wonderful. Okay. And our, our and next John. our next regular meeting is May fifteenth, so and Wednesday the, the, Wednesday May fifteenth at five thirty. Both beer and wine license will come together then? No. No, you we're, already can't. We're hand I'm sorry, you sh I shouldn't be sure. the one yeah, right. Go ahead, uh, sure. So we've just voted on the beer license already. So that is already okay. in the works. And at the next Common Council meeting, that will presumably be uh, ratified by them. Okay. The wine license, uh, Mr. Verbick has said he will keep the process going. So that will be on ALRC's okay. next agenda and the council meeting after that. Okay. Ms. Farley? Yep. And just to confirm, um, we, uh, with Mr. Verbeck, we did agree that there would be no additional fees for the submission uh, for John um, to submit the Class E1. Correct. Cool. Awesome. Any further questions? I just say, John, I just uh, get out more. 
maybe I'll visit your establishment. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it looks like a fun place. <laughs> yeah. That. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me correct what I just said. There's no additional applicate Pub publication fee. fees, Pub fee. but when he goes to get the license fee for wine, he will have to pay the prorated wine license fee. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. Excellent. Any further questions? All right. So, do we have folks yet, Jim, for Interpre two and six? Interpreters here, but I don't know. If uh, let me see. I don't think we have registrants. I'll go ask if he can reach out to them. So I would say just continue on. All right. So let's move on I'm to. I'm able to leave. Yes, you can leave. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Thank you for everything. Thanks. You too. Bye -bye. Okay. Uh, so while Jim's working on that item. 21, new license application for Cassetta at 222 West Wash. Do we have a registrant here for this item? Yeah, Shauna Whalen is uh, here and in Zoom. Excellent. Shauna, can you please introduce yourself and tell us about your proposed establishment? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, um, my name is Shauna Whalen and my partner Nick Lark is here as well. Hello, um, I am Nick Lark. And we own Caseta Kitchen and Counter at 222 West Washington. Um, we've owned it since last June, and we're just applying for a Class C wine license. All righty, committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? Oh, Shauna, who, who's the other person who's there with you? Um, Nick Lark, he is the co-owner of Caseta Kitchen and Counter. Okay. Nick, could you please also fill out the registrant form uh, with the city clerk uh, so that you can also answer questions if you want? Yes. Cool. And you, you can do that in a little bit. You don't have to do it right this second. Uh, feel <laughs> free to participate in the discussion. Uh, Ms. Carter. Ms. So Carter. this is a a deli style restaurant. Am I correct on that? That's correct. Yeah. And you, well, you have late hours. I can't pull up the application. So no, we don't actually have late hours. We are open ten thirty a.m. until two thirty p.m. Um, but we do our the space that we rent is open until. Technically 11 p.m. Um, myself and Nick used to do private dinners on Saturday evenings prior to owning the business. And uh, we've had requests recently to just host rehearsal wedding dinners. And so that's why we're applying to this liquor license. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Uh, committee, what other questions do you have for the applicant? Okay. Jim, do we have any other registrants for this item? We do not. Committee, what's your pleasure? I move to I grant. Move approval. Oh. So we have a motion to approve from Alder Revere, second from Ms. Carter. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 21 is granted. Congratulations, uh, Shauna and Nick, and have a good rest of your night. Thank you Thank so you. much. See if he's sure. Um, Indrajit, it looks like you are back in Zoom. Uh, would you like to give it another shot and see if we're able to hear you? First, you've got to do undo your mute in Zoom. Um, Ariana, 
Ilana, is there anything that you can do to help Indrajit? Um, the only thing I can recommend is make sure that the correct mic is selected over in the um, lower left-hand corner. There's a little tiny arrow that points upward. Um, just at this point, maybe just try selecting like either one that's available just to see which one works at this point. And also, Jim, did you send an unmute request? I did, yeah. Okay. So the, fir the first thing to do is accept that request to unmute. And they did unmute before when I sent that mm -hmm. last time. All right. Well, we do have other items we need to get to. Do we have the registrant here for Casa Fiesta? Okay, cool. All right. Well, let us continue with our agenda, and hopefully we will have some better luck a little bit later in the meeting. So next up, we have a whole bunch of new license applications for refuel pantry. Um, it looks like these do have different agents. So let's start with number... 22, Refuel Pantry at 4601 Verona Road with the agent Melissa McPherson. Do we have a registrant for this item? Yeah, the owner and the agent are, are here um, for that, as well as uh, a Lucas Rowe is also here. So Lakbir Singh, uh, Melissa McPherson, and Lucas Rowe, all from Refuel Pantry, are here. All right, so Melissa... Lockbeer and Lucas, um, are, are they here in person or? Yeah, they're all here in a row. Excellent, great. Um, who would you folks like to have come up and talk to us first? All right, can you please first introduce yourself, second, tell us if we're going to be dealing with all of these at once or if they're divided up somehow. And third, tell us what you're proposing. So uh, I'm uh, Lak Peer Singh. I'm the owner of uh, Refuel Pantry. And uh, we'll be dealing with all. So I have made uh, 12 applications. And uh, so this is uh, in regard to um, purchasing uh, 12 convenience stores located in Madison. So we are here asking to get uh, new licenses to serve um, um, beer and uh, ciders. You mean to sell, not to serve, right? Correct, to sell. Yeah, it's a class A uh, thing. Yep. Excellent. Just making sure we're on the same page there. Yeah. Great. Committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? Alder Verveer. Perhaps to start, uh, if you could just explain, you and Attorney Rowe could explain the overview that you obviously have 12 applications on the agenda before us. Could you give us the overview of the, I presume it's a purchase, uh, what your relationship was with, we had you know quite a history with the former owner of Capital Petroleum, as you can imagine, as the court system did as well. Could, could you give us just the overview of, are you purchasing all of their assets and your background and so forth, please? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I'm actually um, in contract to purchase all of the locations from Capital Petroleum. So a little bit about myself. So I've been um, in the convenience store, C store uh, business for 20 plus years, and I have uh, had licenses in City of Madison also for some time. You know. So that's how I recognized you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. But uh, um, so we like to do things different than the current ownership. You know, we like to run clean stores. And uh, you know, um, better lit stores, and you know, so I think uh, there's a lot of value add for those stores. I mean, I didn't know um, the cap the previous owner, so this was uh, like a listing came over to me. So um, 
we thought that there was a potential to clean those properties and serve the community in a better way. So that's why we're here. Can you remind us what other licenses you hold in the city of Madison? Yes. Yeah. So I have a one on um, East Wash. It's 422 East Wash Avenue. And then I have one um, on Mill Pond Road. And then I have a couple other ones. It's called Severson Sitco. I have DB's Auto under a different business name. Yes. Yeah. Those are the um, four. four. Four in the city of Madison. Four of city. Yeah. Then I have, I'm in um, Sun Prairie. I've been there for 10 plus years. You know, but and then I'm in some other communities as well. Um, you know, like Deerfield, Cambridge, so a lot in the Dane County. Yes, yep. So a lot of operation, smart. obviously. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. And these are all going to have brands or flags of. So your other assets are they're not are they eventually all going to have the same brand or flag fuel or? Y- yes. So so the intent for this is to kind of like create our um, like. Stay away from the Capital Petroleum name to kind of create our own brand. You know, sounds to kind good of to us, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then kind of create some kind of loyalty. So we are, you know, my intent is to kind of replace, um, like, like the PDQs and the stop and goes. You know, because I think after Quick Trip has taken those over, people don't have a second option in the city. So we want to try to kind of create some kind of reward program, coffee programs, car wash programs between the sites. You know, so so that's what the intent is to rebrand them to kind of you know, provide better customer service and yeah, help the community. Yes. Would you be rebranding the four other? I mean, obviously you have many in the county. So is your ultimate goal out of curiosity to rebrand everything then? So you'll be like the next quick trip then? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't so know. Like Seversons, for example, that's Amico, right? Amico. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think a lot of the flags on the, um, so Amico would stay as Amico because there's some contracts on the back end. I see. But I think the store, like you probably used to stop and goes, like they had sure. their store brand. You know, so and we'll also to, the national fuel brand. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so we're we're gonna try to create something with a refuel entry brand to kind of have I that. See brand. Now. Yes. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank you. And then, as you know, there are all sorts of different conditions on these existing licenses. Every one is unique, which is why we perhaps have to take them one by one. I guess one way we could look at it, although we have a request from at least one. Uh, city council colleague of of ours, mine, um, colleagues, uh, to add conditions to at least I think, I think at least one of the locations that might not have current conditions. Just generally, sir, do you have any? Have you have you all in your team researched all the current existing conditions on Capital Petroleum's licenses, and do you have concerns with any of the? I, I should, sorry, Chair, I might be, I'm trying to do an overview first, but you know where I'm going. But if, since the Chair is being lenient and, and allowing, without going, you know, license by license, do you have, are you asking us tonight to modify any of the conditions generally in any of these 12 licenses? I mean, I would like to kind of like pretty much have the same conditions as I have on my other two licenses, you know, which is like, I don't, I think. Other two or other four? Um, the other two are under the same um, corporation's name, so that's why I was kind of referring oh, to. I see. But I think none of my other locations have any conditions except it's like a class A liquor license limited to wine and cider sales only. So so that's the only condition. Yeah. And that's, uh, as you probably are aware, that's also a Madison General Ordinance that Correct. if you yep. have yeah. pumps, you can't have spirits, yes. hard yep. liquor, yeah. Yeah, so so I think, and we've been doing pretty good with that. Like, I mean, that's the only condition we had, and uh, we didn't have any um, violations in the past. Yeah, so I would like to, can I, that we have no conditions, you know, just. Uh, uh, I can certainly appreciate that that's what your hope would be. So, f- so for example, the first license just in the order on our agenda, the one that we technically are on is Verona Road. And so Verona Road currently has three conditions on their license. So you're saying that you would object to those three licenses, those three license conditions? I can just read them, but no single cans or single bottles of beer, fermented malt beverages, exclusion from previous condition for specially imported beers and microbrews. And the idea behind that, of course, was that some aren't, aren't sold or only sold single. Uh, and then three at the time of this issuance, no increase in space for beer sales when when yes. obviously this license was last granted. 
Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know when these conditions were put. Looks like they were put in 2004. So maybe the ordinances were different or um, so. Yeah, these also predate our the conditions that we've applied to a number of similar establishments. Uh, these have all have old, the licenses that exist have older style wording than what we would apply today. I thought you were here for the high V conversation, for example. And so the high V ones were the industry conditions that were all the folks in the audience tonight of downtown locations and they have the standard conditions on them. And because of the significant issues we've had in the past with panhandling downtown outside establishments. And obviously that was an issue. There's at least one again of your applications tonight where the alder of the district asked us today in writing to add conditions to that license because of police calls for service. So I, I don't know, Chair, if we should start just by going through them one by one or if so, I, I know what your thoughts are. I've been thinking about this a bit. Um, so some of these, they're, the properties are currently licensed. Um, oh, and I want to make it clear. Nobody's asking you a question right now. That's just the committee discussing. Some of these are currently licensed. A lot of them are not. So these are brand new licenses that the establishment didn't have before. Um, certainly the easiest and most straightforward thing would be to approve all of them with the same set of conditions and to give them all the conditions that many such establishments have. Um, that would not be confusing and it would be straightforward. Obviously, we have a large array, array of options. Um, my recommendation would be, actually, let's see. I don't know if I want to be as heavy handed as to make a recommendation unless somebody asks me to make one. Put it out on the table so we have a discussion point, please. By all I means. guess I'm asking. <laughs> so, um, Alder Verveer, do you have further questions? No, no, I'm yielding fully to you, Chair. Okay. At this point. Um, well, I'm going to step back and, like Ms. Wester suggested, let. Uh, let everybody have their say, and if anybody wants, I'll give an opinion after that. Alder no, Knox. no, I was suggesting that you. She give wants us to your hear your thoughts. So that okay, can start didn't the discussion. understand. So, uh, all right. The way I would and do it, and I echoed it, Chair. Okay. so go for it. So the way I would do it is, I would uh, right now say, let's grant all of them with that same set of conditions. We would then extend to the uh, applicant the opportunity that for any of those where he believes those conditions are inappropriate and unnecessary, that those uh, don't end up going to the Common Council. So the Common Council would approve the ones that have the conditions at their next meeting. The other ones... I'm, I am concerned, given the volume of these, with the whether people will have, whether we're going to get all of the feedback that we need tonight. Um, maybe, all right, I do have a question for you now. So I understand as any business and operator, you would prefer not to have conditions that are unnecessary. How onerous would you find the... Are, are you familiar with what Alder Verveer means when he says the standard conditions? Um, I think so, yes. Okay. So if we granted all of your licenses with those conditions and you had the opportunity to operate for a while with them and then with any locations where you felt that they were unnecessary, you could come back with an application for a change of license conditions uh, as somebody did earlier tonight and got them stricken because we felt, yes, indeed, given how your operation is going, it's not necessary. Is that something where you would think this is a satisfactory outcome? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think that's a 
fair cool. assumption. Yep. We might be able to save a lot of your time then. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bruchak, then Alder Knox, then Alder Verveer. I like, um, I like your idea about uniformity among the um, various establishments. Um, however, I think the standard conditions are ones we, we I suppose, could remove, but they would still have to follow anyway, given the ordinance, right? So there's, there's two separate things. There's the condition about anything with gas pumps not selling hard liquor. Yeah. That one is automatic. Yeah. And that one, we would only be putting it on the license uh, to provide additional information about what they already have to do. But the second set about... Um, Container size, basically the what in a uh, earlier age would have been the no forties rule, uh, but is now uh, you know. Let me pull it. Up. Well, it's what we just had earlier in the meeting where, that we took off of high V's, like the whole domestic sub premium, yes. mm -hmm. including value, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, I don't like those conditions. Um, <laughs> No offense taken. <laughs> um, but that that's, uh, and then other than otherwise applying the standard conditions uniformly, I, I do think it would be worth it to hear about, I think, the one request from an, another alder that um, Alder Revere mentioned. So, Well, let's answer that. Alder Revere, was the request to have the uh, panhandling prevention conditions, or was it something different? Yes, so it's, well, specifically, and we're jumping around, so with acknowledging that one more time, the specific request was for 4102 Commercial Avenue by the Alder of the District, Alder Field, and I, was this not emailed to the whole committee yet? Was it only emailed to me, Jim? He was emailed, he emailed it to licensing, Okay. and I think in, in the Alder BCC'd yeah. me, perhaps, oh, let me so maybe that. I'm the only one that received it. It well, was sent at 4.10 p.m. this afternoon. While, while we wait for that, can you guess? Yeah, so anyway, so, so in essence, he's requesting, I'll cut to the chase. Specifically, I'm interested, he, there's a much preamble here. I'm cutting to the chase. Specifically, I'm interested in a condition preventing the sale of single bottles so. and cans, and perhaps other conditions that you all consider helpful in these cases from your experience, license requests in sensitive areas of the city. And earlier he um, explains that MPD did a call for service analysis. And at appropriate time, I did want to ask Captain Hansen if he's been able to collate feedback from all of his fellow captains across the city on this. I know that Captain Ed Marshall perhaps maybe volunteered and did the call for service data analysis based on an email I also received with that analysis. Um, so at an appropriate time, perhaps early in this conversation, I did want to hear from Captain Hansen sure. as well. I, uh, but if I could, one other maybe broad question for you, sir. Are you planning to have the same product offerings at every store? So in other words, you'll be selling the full range of beer, wine, cider at all of these dozen at these dozen locations, correct? You're yeah, applying for Class A beer, Class A liquor, Class A cider at all locations. Correct. Yeah, that's what the intent is. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Thank you for that. Okay. Can I also ask just, and Captain Hanson, I know, has, has turned his camera on here, as you see. Have you, did you take the time or a member of your team to, to speak with every one of the Madison Police Department captains in each of these districts? So you have different feedback from all of the different captains at this point? Yes, we did. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Could I just ask Captain Hansen now, since the overview, um, Captain, did did you receive feedback from your colleagues about these dozen licenses? I, and specifically, do you have Ed Marshall's, Captain Marshall's call for service analysis that I was shared, that was shared with me? I do not have that analysis, and I've not heard back from every um, uh, captain that these... Uh, stores will be in their district. However, I will say um, if there are restrictions and the consistency across the board, across the city, uh, that would certainly help us. Um, and certainly some stores, and the one that comes to mind is on Verona Road, uh, a large volume of incidents there that we've responded to from shootings to other violent acts. 
um, that we'd rather start smaller, easier, uh, and and work with the applicant than um, not have as many restrictions. Yeah, thank thank you, Captain. I just emailed you what I what was forwarded to me from Captain Marshall. And as I look at these, and it's no surprise, the analysis only extends to that part of the city, not citywide. Did did you say you you've only heard from a few of your colleagues or most of the colleagues on this? Do they have any sort of general feedback or like for some locations, do they have no concerns in other locations? As you just said, Verona Road, there's there's one that jumps out. Right. And and that um that's accurate. I've not heard from every captain. And, you know, for, for us, as um, the applicant is, I think there's 12 altogether. Is that correct? Is that correct. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, we'd want to start very um, slow and, and easy with the restrictions in place because uh, they can always come off. And I just I wouldn't want to jump ahead without getting all the captain's input. I just don't know some of the surrounding neighborhoods and surrounding areas to some of these uh, stores that he's applied to. OK. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Chris, uh, Alder Knox. Yes, before we get into all the other possibilities, I was going to suggest that we apply the maybe the strictest conditions and then like the captain suggested he could come back later and request removal of them after we get some time to see how those things work. I don't know if six months is what we usually use or whatever, but that's what I would recommend. And I'm certainly willing to make a motion to that. Okay. Let's not but I but I would like but I would like to know <laughs> what those basic restrictions are. Sure. Could. I would be happy to answer that question. So, what those conditions would be, would be, number one, the establishment shall not sell, dispense, or give away fermented malt beverages in the original container in amounts less than the amount contained in a six pack of 12 ounce bottles or cans. This is only applicable to fermented malt beverages which fall into the following categories of brands. Domestic premium, domestic sub premium, which includes value and economy brands, malt liquor, and similarly situated imported brands. So that's the first one. Next one is Flavored malt beverages containing up to 6% alcohol by volume may not be sold, dispensed, or given away in the original container in amounts less than a four-pack of 12-ounce bottles or cans. Flavored malt beverages containing over 6% alcohol by volume may not be sold, dispensed, or given away in the original container in amounts less than a six-pack of 12-ounce bottles or cans. And the, estab the next one is the establishment shall not sell, dispense, or give away flavored fortified wines in the original container with an alcohol content of more than 12.5% alcohol by volume, where spirits have been added to the wine that have not been produced from the same fruit as the wine for consumption off the licensed premises. This prohibition shall not apply to any other wine product as defined by Wisconsin State Statute 125.02 sub 22. And finally, I don't have the wording for this right in front of me, but the you can't sell booze at a gas station condition. So, you know, I think it's Class A liquor limited to sales of wine only is, I believe, how it's worded. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yep. Class A liquor license limited to only sales of wine. Oh, oh, wine and cider. Right. In this case, they're applying for Class A cider licenses. Oh, well, that makes it even easier. So, all right. Does that answer your question, Alder Knox?
You're muted. Yeah, that answers my question. Thank you. All right. Uh, who else is in the queue? Nobody else has their hand up. Committee. Um, let's try to get this in order a little bit more. Do you have any further questions for the applicant? All right. You may have a seat in the gallery. Do any of the other registrants wish to speak? We do have... We do have registrants in opposition to some of these that have registered, in case you aren't aware, including one gentleman that's in person. Sounds but there are specific applications, of course. Okay. Um, then well, again, I don't know. Look like we want to do this, Jim. Mm -hmm. Which items have registrants in opposition, whether they wish to speak or not? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> item twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. As one in person wishing to speak. Okay. Uh, and then 32 and 33 also have opposition, and that person is in Zoom wishing to speak. Okay. So in that case, what I'm going to do is first handle items 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, and 31. So we can dispose of those and then... Uh, hear testimony from people in opposition to the other ones. Ms. Westra. You're muted. I was Ms. going to move the motion for the those ones that you just... So your motion is to grant items 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30 and 31 with the four conditions uh, Alder Revere and I enumerated earlier? It is. Wonderful. I hear the motion. Is there a second? I second. Second from Alder Knox. Uh, Mr. Verbrick, I will, of course, email you these conditions. Um, committee. Can you read the numbers again? Of course. Items. Um, I'm going to read the numbers and also the addresses. Okay. And if anybody hears me say something wrong, don't wait for me to finish. Just shout out right then, hey, that's not right. All right. Item 22, which is 4601 Verona. 23, which is 699 South Whitney. 24, which is 605 Cottage Grove. 25, which is 4905 Commercial. 26, which is 6702 Mineral Point. 28, which is 4325 Mohawk. 29, which is 4102 Commercial. 30, which is 3102. Uh, 30, which is 3101 North Sherman. And 31, which is 699 South Gammon. Did you say 30 twice? Yes, okay. I thought I heard somebody saying something, and I <laughs> took myself. I'm good. All right, so any discussion of the motion for that set of items? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, all right. Uh, motion carries. Uh, we have item 22, granted with conditions. 23, granted with conditions. 24, granted with conditions. 25, granted with conditions. 26, granted with conditions. 28, granted with conditions. 29, granted with conditions. 30, granted with conditions. And 31, granted with conditions. We have now disposed of those items from our agenda. So let's move on to item 27, which is a new license application for refuel pantry at 4601 Cottage Grove. Jim, we have a registrant for this one. Do they wish to speak? Uh, yes. Excellent. Let's hear from them. Uh, Jean Thompson is registered in opposition wishing to speak. Beautiful. Jean, please take a stand. I'm uh, Gene Thompson. I live behind the property at uh, 4601 Cottage Grove. 
My address is uh, 1013 Acewood Boulevard. I take care of the maintenance at, uh, and yard work at uh, 1013 Acewood Boulevard. I pick up a lot of these little liquor containers. I don't know what's in them. I, have, I just got notice of this at 3 o'clock this afternoon. The, the post office sent me this in an envelope saying it got damaged in the oh, post. No. Postal, but it isn't postmarked until April 15th, so I don't know that it would have got here any sooner anyhow. Mm. Today's the 17th, and the postmark is in Milwaukee. So this is not much notice, and I frankly don't know much about liquor stores. I've never worked in a liquor store. I've never done any research on liquor stores, so when you talk about these conditions, they kind of go over my head. Absolutely. Uh, but... Maybe you've covered all, already. Maybe you could answer this. Uh, yeah. Yes. Is these little answer. bottles of whatever is in them. I, I think it's hard liquor, but... I... So the, the answer is probably going to be very much to your liking, which is not only are they not allowed to sell those, huh? they're not allowed to sell hard liquor, period, okay. in any size bottle. Okay. And I could, if I could just interject, if it's in order, the, the current... Liquor license for Capital Petroleum huh? on Cottage Grove Road is for beer only. Yeah. So I don't. So they were illegally selling, perhaps the well, airplane bottles. I don't, bottles I don't or minis, know where they come from. I don't. I don't see them. Is that they're I just pick them up. There. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but my driveway, uh, my exit driveway, goes out to Cottage Grove Road, right alongside their uh, the east uh, border of their property. My driveway and their east line are the same, and uh, that's often where I find them. And I find them uh, uh, over, over the fence between our property, and I find them in my shrubbery in the f front of my property. Uh, but there is another liquor store within 100 yards of, of theirs, and, and, and maybe that's, that's where they come from. I, I don't, they don't know. Uh, I would think that's where they're uh, coming from if that's a full liquor store, yeah. Uh, right. uh, it, it, it is a full liquor store, and then uh, that liquor store is on the, they're on the southeast corner of Cottage Grove and Acewood, and the other liquor store is part of a small uh, shopping area on the southwest corner, and then on the Northwest corner is Walgreens, and I don't know for sure, but maybe Walgreens sells some of the same stuff, too. Uh, but we've got plenty of uh, liquor in this area. Uh, I suppose the committee has already gotten across, the, uh, gone past the idea, do we need uh, uh, to sell liquor in every gas station in the city? And apparently... Uh, the way that things proceed here, my impression is you do need to sell liquor in every gas station in the city uh, for some reason. Not necessarily. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the purview of this committee is to look out for the health, safety, and welfare of the community. Okay. So if, in our opinion, adding another establishment to an area uh, or to a specific location would be counter to the health, safety, and welfare of the community, we can, on those grounds deny the application. Now, the specific thing that you have been talking about is, uh, I mean, you're talking about the, the littering, but I assume it's also the fact that people are drinking these containers on or near your property and then littering, right? That, that is true. That yeah. is absolutely true. In fact, I think that one of them lived in the bushes in my property for a while before I found so them there. The set of conditions that we applied to several of these other licenses already huh? are explicitly designed. So I know the wording is arcane, huh? but the goal behind that wording is to say you can't sell single serving things. You can't sell cheap single serving Mm -hmm. which uh, panhandlers are likely to come in, buy with the small amount of money they've gotten, and then drink in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Alder Revere could probably attest, we've had a lot of success mm -hmm. around the city with those conditions helping to curb the kinds of behavior that you and we want to prevent. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's a lot of children in this area, too. It, you, you may not be aware of but I am. I've been there 50 years. Uh, to the 
east of my driveway exiting on Cottage Grove Road is, is an apartment complex. I, I can't remember how many they have, but it's, it's big. It's, uh, it's uh, some, I, life something over there. And then the Ace Apartments right across the street from them has a big complex of four stories that just, just went up. My building behind the gas station is an eight unit. I know we have four kids there, and I, when I go out in the morning, I see a lot of kids from the Acewood uh, LVM neighborhood standing at the corner by the gas station, actually it's the area between my property and their property, waiting for uh, some bus transport to get them to uh, where they need to go to school. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, I don't think the neighborhood is helped by having another uh, uh, liquor establishment, or, and I use that word generally, uh, at this location. Thank you. Committee, what questions do you have for this registrant? Thank you. I just, good. Alter I just want to thank you very much for coming, for sitting here for the last several hours, and apologies for the very short notice in, in terms of the notice you received from us by mail. I'm sorry, you only had a matter of a few hours for that as well before you, with that arriving in your mailbox today. Thank you much. But thank you, yeah. So we're, we're hoping that the conditions we place in these licenses tries to, as the chairman said, prevent some of the neighborhood concerns that you have. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you again, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Verbeck, do we have any other registrants for item 27? We do not. All right. Committee, what is your pleasure regarding refuel pantry item 27, 4601 Cottage Grove? I would like to place the same conditions that you previously went over for the other ones. All right, we have a motion to grant from Ms. Carter with the same conditions as the previous nine-ish. Do I hear a second? No second. Second from Alder Verveer. Uh, is there any discussion of item 27? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Oh, wait, we have someone raising. Who's Aaron Ring? Uh, I don't know. It sounds familiar. It's, a, it's someone with a different license. Somebody may be registered for one of the other items. Let me see if I have any registration for news. Don't see any registrations for Aaron Ring. Okay. Um, so, uh, once again, any dissent for item 27? Right, hearing none, item 27 is granted with conditions. Next up, item 32, a new license application for refuel pantry at 3019 East Wash. Do we have a registrant in opposition to this one? Yeah, so the, the registrant for 32 and 33 no longer wishes to speak, um, still in opposition. I did forward an email that they sent um, to the committee. All right. So It's from uh, Gurpreet Guman. I will give the members of the committee the opportunity to review Gurpreet's email. And I'm gonna ask Mr. Verbeck an unrelated question while you do.
All right. Committee, what is your pleasure regarding items 32 and 33? So I have one question. Does the does the one that we're 30, the one we're talking about right now, do they have an existing liquor license? The gas station? 3019 does not. And 27, neither of them currently has a license. Good question. They do neither. Neither do you said. Uh, as far as I can tell, no. Alder Revere. Thank you. Could I ask the applicant to come back for a question, please? Thank you. Thank you. So that we have the correct information, is it your knowledge that did either these two locations in East Washington Avenue, 3019 or 2702, did they, were those previous licensed establishments? Uh, no, actually, that that'll be the new, new license for them. Yep. So they were not. Uh, there was only, I think, five of the twelve which had license before. Right. So now we understand. Are these existing gas stations that that they they simply were never granted licenses by the city? Before? Yeah, I don't know if they were. I think they never applied for the licenses. That's what I was told. I see. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And then. If I could, Captain Hansen, have you have received specific feedback as to these new locations that would be brand new licenses on East Wash by chance? I am reviewing um, my list right in front of me, going back and forth here. What specific uh, so question? The, the addresses are, are well, so if you have the agenda in front of you, it's we're on agenda item 32. Yep. And then um, the other one is 30, 33. That is okay. 32 is okay by uh, Captain Marshall. My notes for 33 with Captain Jamar. He spoke with the um, applicant on April 5th. He said, okay, if they only sell beer as a C store. Those are the notes I have from Captain Jamar, Gary. In other words, no hard liquor from Jamar. Correct. Uh, yeah. Well, that's Thank you. I presume probably wine doesn't trouble. Captain Gary does it, I would think. If it was beer and wine. I, I mean, he he would have known to put be, uh, wine as well. He uh, said, okay, if they only sell beer. So I, I could go back and ask him um, uh, if he wanted me to, but um, those were the direct notes he sent me. Thank you. Thank you. you I've looked back, and it does not appear that there has ever been an application, at least as far as Legistar has been yeah, around. Thank you. I was, these locations. I was looking at the same time. Yeah. Can I ask the applicant, since he is even so convenient, has not moved back to his original seat? Uh, yeah, please, since we're, you know, on television and Internet and whatever right now, to, so you can be in the right camera angle and the microphone. Can you... Share with us your conversations with Captains Marshall and 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 Gary as it relates to the East Wash locations. Yes, yeah, I think I had a conversation with the Captain Gary, and uh, he seemed okay. So he he called me twice. He said he was going to check into the calls, um, and uh, he said he had a lot of problems in the neighborhood about uh, um, some homeless problems, and you know. But he said you'll have to update your trespassing signage and. Uh, and I said, yeah, whatever you tell me, we'll do it. So I think those were the conversations. So we didn't specifically talk about beer, wine, or, you know, but he seemed, I mean, what I gathered from the conversation was that he was okay with getting us a license. Mm. And you don't recall any distinction between beer and wine, as Captain Hansen just shared with us? Oh. 
I yeah I don't we didn't have yeah. that conversation or yeah. And then any, do you recall anything from Captain Marshall as it related to East Wash? Uh, no, I think it was all um, kind of okay. just normal. Like what what are you planning to do? And you know so cameras, I'm sure. And, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, which we will have. So of at course. both locations, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you again. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for the musical chairs. Yes, no, yeah. thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Alder Verveer or anybody else have further questions for the applicant at this time? All right. You can have a seat again. Thank you. Thank you. So, committee. Um, Well, conveniently, right in the area of these two stores, there is uh, another comic book store. So I uh, <laughs> frequented that area as well. And unlike... What are the, your observations? <laughs> unlike the spot on the west side, there's a lot of foot traffic there. There are homeless people who hang out in that area. Uh, it is well-trafficked. So, committee, what is your pleasure regarding either or both of these items? And you were referring to 2702 East Wash in your observations just now. The store that I'm, the, the comic book store is in the 2800 block, so it's actually close to both of those. I see, yeah. Yeah, Captain Marshall's... Um, Police call for service data that was shared with me specifically says for 2702 East Wash across from East Side Shopping Center and McDonald's, 46 calls for service in the area. In what time period? Oh, good, great question. Let's see what that was up here. The date range was 2022 through a week ago. Okay. Well, so that's... And he was more specific and said that the gas station had many burglaries uh, in the past, and check property calls, disturbances weren't as significant. And this is 2702. This is 2702. Okay. Well, so let's... Yeah. Let's address that one then. We'll do it one at a time. Item 33 is a new license application for refuel pantry at 2702 East Wash. Uh, I hate to do this. Can I? I'll just because this is a bit concerning. Could you come back one more? <laughs> Maybe last time. I'm sorry. So we don't. Ha I haven't received feedback from the my city council colleagues, and I don't know if if um, Alder Knox has or not. But can you share with us your conversations with the Alders? that represent these East Wash loca proposed locations. Do you have that in your notes? Uh, yeah, let me go back, because I only heard back from, I think, one or two alders. Um, okay. Can I ask, Harry, that wasn't about this location, right? The, the one you had? No. Yeah, so we um, we called, left, uh, or emailed. Some of them said, you know, to email them. Um, so, But we haven't heard anything back, you know. Okay. But I think the conversation I had with the... Um, the officer, uh, Captain Gary, was about, uh, he had more problems right next to the property, not particularly at this property, about trespassing and all that, you know. And uh, and we had plans to kind of like uh, make sure the store is well lit and the windows that he could see through, it, it's not like blocked. You know, I think those were the conversations we had um, too. And I said, yeah, we're willing to work on those, yes. Mm -hmm. So if we have the the district's correct and the boundary for city council members is right through this area, but the alders in question, if the names ring a bell, are uh, Alder Amani Latimer Burris and Alder Dina Nina Martinez Rutherford. Do either of those names ring a bell? No, I didn't talk oh, to them. Oh, your colleague. Could you come come and join your And you're registered as well, sir, correct? Yes, sir. If you could introduce yourself when you sit down, please. So I'm Harinder Singh, and I'm uh, registered as an agent for uh, uh, 3019 East Washington Avenue. Okay. And I did talk to Elder, and they were okay with it. I just had a brief conversation. Wh wh which, which, which name? 
Did you say you spoke with them? They Nina. said they were okay. Nina. Nina D- Dina and Nina Martinez were at the first. Yes. So she asked her if we are aware of all the laws, and uh, that's pretty much about it. That's all the conversation was, you know. And with 12 applications, I'm sure this has been quite a yes. fun prospect, uh, contacting all the alders and neighborhood associations and police captains. So I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. Could you repeat one last time what you your summary of the conversation? So what, just regarding the laws, how to apply for the license and what the conditions will be and all that, you know, and uh, that's pretty much about it. And she had no problem for the specific location or whatnot, you know. You say you did discuss with the alder the proposed conditions potentially. So she said so. So basically, we had just a conversation regarding like what the procedure gonna be and all that, and if we know how to do it and what you know. And uh, she did not mention any issues for either of the locations. Okay, so, so she, you didn't actually she had talk. two locations. Two so you didn't speak about specific conditions. No. Yeah. He was okay with everything. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. What are you thinking, Alder of Revere? I'm thinking I probably have no more questions, I believe, for you, too. So <laughs> sorry to keep asking you to come back and forth. Cool. I'll yield. So, I'll yield. Thank you again, uh, gentlemen. All right, committee. What's your pleasure? Ms. Carter. Yes, I am going to continue my path of sameness, and that is to have the same um, conditions on this location in addition. And which location is this? Or which item the, number? Oh, holy beans. I know. Really? <laughs> But the remaining ones to help you out are items 32 and 33, which are a few blocks apart on East Wash. Yeah, but didn't did but I thought 27 was also in that one. We have disposed of 27 okay. already. Okay. I don't, thank you very much. Of course. For the remaining ones then, yes. All right. So you are moving that. To, to grant items 32 and 33 with the identical conditions that we've applied to the other refill pantry locations? Right. I think that'll make it easier for um, law enforcement and easier for the staff to know what the conditions are uni- uniformly. Thank you. By all means. All right. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second from Alder Knox. Discussion. Hearing none is Alder Revere. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I I do take seriously the concern about saturation of licensed premises in this corridor in East Wash, and it is concerning. I do hope the conditions will be of some assistance in that regard and of faith in the representations by the applicant that they run a good business. Uh, So because we haven't heard any objections from the elders of the district that know best, at least in my book, uh, and also aided by the comforted by the fact that the final say will be held, will be had by the Madison Common Council on May 7th. Uh, I will certainly support the motion, and and if either of those alders of the district have concerns, they certainly will articulate them at the Common Council meeting. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you, thank you Alder Revere. Any further discussion of the motion to grant items 32 and 33 with conditions? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Items 32 and 33 are granted with the same set of conditions as all of their siblings. So that should be all of your items. Congratulations. Thank you for your patience and have a good rest of your night. (coughs) Okay. Moving right along. 
Can Anybody? we lose our interpreter? Yeah, let's uh, let's do an easy one. Um, items two easy two, ones. Two and six. Uh, Mr. Verbick, can you please fill us in on uh, those two? Yeah, so the interpreter, um, he had reached out to them previously and told, I think, told them either this morning or yesterday that he would be here for them, and they had indicated they would be here, um, but they had not registered, and he contacted them, um, had a conversation with them. He tried calling them, went to voicemail, had a conversation with them on WhatsApp, and then um, the applicant indicated that she cannot connect online and is not going to appear in person. Uh, he asked her if she wanted the application to be postponed for May or if she wanted to withdraw it, and her answer was she did not wish to pursue the license anymore. Wow. All right. So there you have it. Uh, committee, what is your pleasure regarding items two and six? Mr. Bruchak. Move to place on file without prejudice. I hear a motion to place items two and six on file without prejudice. Do I hear a second? Second. Second from Ms. Westra. Any discussion? Hearing none, any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Items two and six are placed on file without prejudice. Next up, item 19. Um, that's the one. So 19 is Viceroy Indian at 7475 Mineral Point. The registrant attempted but failed to uh, get into or to got successfully got into Zoom but was not able to get their audio to work. So I would entertain a motion to refer this to the next regularly scheduled ILRC meeting. So moved. Moved by Second. Ms. Westra, seconded by Alder Knox. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 19 is referred. Mr. Verbick, would you reach out and perhaps recommend that the application, applicant come in person? Sure. But they, of course, have the option to give it another try over Zoom. Okay. They could have made it down here perhaps tonight with our long agenda. <laughs> That's entirely possible. So next up, item 34, new license for Cap Center Market. Do we have a registrant here for this item? Two of them. Yeah, we do. It is. Um, if you're here, you can start waving or something. Uh, Darren, Bur Darren Burson. Yeah. Come on up. Oh. Excellent. So can you please introduce yourself and tell us what's going on? Sure. I'm Darren Burson. Um, I'm in purchasing Cap Center Market, um, 1st of May. Um, taking over the grocery store that's been there for quite a while, and it's about what I'm doing. Excellent. Have, were you previously involved in Cap Center Market at all? No, not in the Cap Center. Um, I've been in the grocery business for 20 plus years. I own a grocery store in New Glarus right now, presently. Um, I did own a store in Belleville. Um, so uh, this is it's just kind of the next step I, to get to two stores. Um, it's my first store in Madison. Excellent. And in New Glarus now or in Belleville in the past, did you uh, sell alcohol? Yep. I, I presently have an alcohol um, Class A license in New Glarus for the last eight years. Um, Belleville, I had it for 13 years. Um, I no longer own that location. Cool. Committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? <laughs> Mr. Bruchak. Um, you were applying for a uh, Class A beer, Class A liquor, right? So the current cap center doesn't have liquor. Um, is that the only change to the, the business? Uh, I'm not changing that. Uh, I, I think there might have been some miscommunication there over at the office. We're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to sell beer and I'm going to sell wine. There's going to be no liquor sold there. Okay. So you can sell the wine, Darren? Yes. Oh, so the state, you, state law, yeah, so the, class A liquor will limit to wine only. Okay, maybe I misread that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, you didn't misread it. That is oh. what he's applying for. Okay. But I was just helping to explain <laughs> yeah. that. He, that's the license he has to get liquor. to sell wine. Okay. Yes. Uh, but he's not planning to use the full license. Yes. Right. right. So it's the exact same license that Mitch Evelyn, the current owner, currently has. Exactly. Is what he's applied for. And is. I'll go ahead. I don't want to interrupt. Oh, that's that's my only uh, question. I'm. Uh, 
um, I'll just let you know I'll be I'm I'm in that store multiple times a week. So Great. <laughs> see you there. <laughs> Just see you daily. And Darren's daughter. Yeah, I got my daughter with me. <laughs> She'll be there too. Hopefully, she's there more than me. <laughs> nice. Although they both live downtown, which is really exciting. Yes, yeah, we do. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? Uh, Alder Verveer. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So, Darren, I can't remember if we discuss this specifically in our conversation or when you came to the neighborhood association meeting but mitch evelyn currently has uh, five conditions on his license the first um, in fact they're very similar to what you've been sitting through much of the night so they're the uniform standard conditions in all downtown campus class a establishments the ones that you've heard articulated by the chair tonight and then the last one was just discussed as well, and that's the sale of liquor shall be limited to wine sales only. So the first four are the standard uniform ones to try to discourage panhandling outside your store and so forth. Do you, do you want us to go through those with you at all, or have you had a chance to look at Mitch's license? Yes, and, I've looked at Mitch's. Yeah, do you have any concerns at all with continuing those conditions on a new license? No. Thank you. We appreciate that. Well, that's easy. And you're not planning to expand the... Um, offerings of alcohol at all, like in terms of the shelf space for wine or anything, or no, everything stays the same. You already have quite a walk-in beer selection, so right. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Just wanted to clarify that, so we're not surprised. You're not surprised by anything, and right. when we make the motions, thanks. Thank you, Alter Verveer, Mr. Verbeck. Um, is there anything about the conditions on the license that Cap Center Market currently holds that is that you would like the opportunity to have us clean up now. Oh, good point. Number three doesn't apply to them. That's specifically what I was thinking about, but I thought there might be other things I wasn't noticing. Oh, are there other things too? Oh, I, I didn't say there oh, are. Sorry. I said it's possible there are. Yeah. Condition number, the uniform condition number three didn't need to be on this license. It's, it relates to spirits. Yeah. So, so can I don't believe so. So, current condition three should not be continued. Cool. Is there, um, Mr. Bruchak? Uh, so I wasn't going to bring this up with the gas stations, but, um, uh, but there's a new liquor category that we've discussed the past couple of meetings with the liquor based high noons and things like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Now, you, you couldn't, if we have the no liquor sales shall be limited to wine sales only, I think we've... Yeah, the... the we, we've determined that that would preclude you from selling high noon and those liquor-based um, drinks that are, terms. like, they're the... They're kind of like a seltzer, but liquor base and stuff. Like White Claw. And no, no White, White Claw is considered a flavored malt so, beverage, right. I believe, by DOR, aren't they? Even has some more. Okay. It would right. taste like White Claw, yeah. but it's made differently. Yeah, I got you. So that wouldn't be allowed. I mean, we could, we could change that. Um, I think it's specifically authorized that, like we have with other downtown. You could change it so that I could sell it. Yeah. I would. It, is that is that a product category you are interested in potentially selling? I do that at the Miller store. Um, All right. So yeah, the, I mean that would be. Oh. Uh, so white claw is not what we're referring to. Yep, I know high noon. This comes through general beverage. Has a wine base to it. I know. You're, I think I know what you're talking about. Is that what? Well, it's not what McTaggart's was referring to. I think it's spirits. It's um, spirit. Yeah, it's like vodka. It comes in the, in the cans. Is yeah. still, it's the cans. It's called high noon. I think it has. Do yeah. you believe that Cap Center currently carries it? I, yeah, You're and there I all the time. Right? I don't. I've never seen it there, but mm. it, it's my I mean, preference would be, and not that I can. It's not only my call, but just as the alder of the district, I would prefer because I've represented to my constituents, our colleagues at Capital Neighborhoods, that it would be the same conditions, and there wouldn't be an expansion. So I would prefer, if you're comfortable, Darren, if we could just go with what is currently there, and if you and your daughter and others feel that working with the sales reps from GB or wherever that you would like to offer something that you don't think you can with your license if you come back and visit with us. Okay. 
Does that sound okay to you? Yeah, no, that's fair. Thank you. But I do. I know White Claw is obviously very popular, and I'm, all the gas stations sell that with beer licenses, so I'm sure that that's not the issue. Of, right, okay. All right. Uh, any further questions for the applicant? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Verbeck, are there any other registrants for this item? There are not. Committee, what's your pleasure? I move to grant with the conditions on the current license at this premise, with the exception of condition number three relating to uh, intoxicating liquor. All right. Is there a second? Four conditions. Second total. from Mr. Bruchak. So the motion is to grant with the exact same conditions on the license currently at that location, except striking the redundant condition number three. Second from Mr. Bruchak, is there any discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 34 is granted. Congratulations, and Congratulations. welcome to the uh, luck. Madison thank Grocery you. Market. All right, thank you're, you very much. You're certainly starting in an exciting spot. Yeah. I don't think you'll be bored. I don't think so either. Yeah. Exciting starting with the too. Mifflin Street block party on the 27th, <laughs> yeah. if you want to observe Mitch's last one. I'm going to hang out and check it out. I'll be there, too. <laughs> awesome. Have a good night. Thanks for your patience all these hours tonight, too. Okay, next up, uh, item 35, new license uh, for Fusion at 36 South Bassett. Do we have a, come on up. Yep. Jacob McRoberts is registered in support, wishing to speak, and uh, he is here in person. Wonderful. So Jacob, come on up, please introduce yourself and let us know what you are proposing. Uh, my name is Jacob McRoberts. I'm here on behalf of Fusion. I am planning to take over Mahen's Liquor Store located at 36 South Bassett Street. Uh, July 1 would be the takeover date. I'm not implementing any major changes in the operation of the store other than the name. Uh, Mahen and his daughter have been training me one day a week, starting only last week. Uh, and we'll do so all the way up until that July 1 takeover date. Um, and will remain a close resource, especially for the first month I take over. Uh, my parents will also be a resource as they have experience in the industry. They owned a sports bar slash restaurant in Verona. Uh, they sold it last year. I helped them manage liquor and food inventory. Uh, I have further experience in managing inventory and dealing with employees as I currently have a vacation rental company, so timing my orders wisely for supplies, things like paper towels, cleaning supplies, tissues, scheduling employees. I've been doing that since 2021. And I think that skill set that I've developed will translate into this industry, along with the support of Mahen and his 35 years of knowledge. My parents' support will help, will help further ensure my success. Um, I'll also be moving across the street from the store at the Avenir Apartments, West Washington Avenue. Um, I'm doing that so I can really live and breathe this business starting out. And yes, I am aware and agree to the four conditions. <laughs> you are well prepared. Um, what was the sports bar in Verona? Uh, it's Time Grill and Pub. It was on west, uh, the west side of Verona. I'm Formerly wondering. as Monty's, now it is Patty Max. Cool. Thank you. Committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? All right. Mr. Verbeck, do we have any other registrants for this item? We do not. Committee, what's your pleasure? Alder Verveer. Thank you. Just, could I just... Quickly confirm with Captain Hansen. I, By I all means, stand from the applicant that you two had either a phone conversation or an email conversation. So I don't know. Do you want to speak to it? Yeah. Yes. First, or one of you wants to go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. We. Had, I left him a message, and then he left me a message a couple of days later, and I called him right back, and we had a it was maybe only a ten minute conversation, and mm -hmm. he asked me things like, "How will you be?" filtering out underages and do you have cameras pointed outside of the building things like that and yeah 
Thank you. Captain Hansen, do you wish to add anything on that? Nope. I like to see the entrepreneurialism and wish them well. And for everyone's Thank information, um, this location currently has the conditions about, you know, not selling the things that panhandlers want to buy. It does not have a restriction against selling hard liquor. So condition three, which we struck from Cap Center Foods, would be relevant in this case. The one saying the establishment shall not sell, dispense, or give away intoxicating liquor in the original container in amounts of 200 milliliters or less in volume. Intoxicating liquor shall not include wine in the original container with an alcohol content of 15% or less by volume. So committee, what's your pleasure? Mr. Bruchak. Oh, there's already a motion. Uh, oh, there is? Or Just to, if I could, while well, Jacob's still sitting here, yeah. you, as you heard the chair read off the conditions. Those are the ones that you understand that yeah. you, you're agreed to. And yep. just to, for the committee's benefit, Jacob and I talked about each of those conditions. And, oh, lovely. And he seems, as he said in his testimony, he's ready, willing, and able to adhere to those. And... And knows that we don't, we are not, um, we are not um, hoping to welcome any problems at the corner of Bassett and Main in terms of panhandling and so forth, which has not been a problem thus far. And we want to continue that it to be peaceful on that corner. So, so we appreciate yeah. you doing that, Jacob, as you pledged. Excellent. So. So, Mr. Ruschuk? I do think that Sherry tried, or excuse me, uh, Ms. Ms. Carter did did say grant, and then I interrupted her. Oh. So that's what that's why you said there's a motion on the right. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Carter, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I move to grant. Would you like to With apply conditions. the conditions that are currently at that location? Correct. Excellent. Uh, do I hear a second? Second from Mr. Bruchak. Any discussion? Hearing none, any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, congratulations, Jacob, and thank you again for your preparation. Thank you. Congratulations and good luck. All right, next up, uh, new license at, uh, item 36, which is a new license application for... Uh, Bays and Sons at Four Collins Court. Do we have a registrant here for this item? Uh, we do have a registrant. Um, it is um, Atik Ula, and they are in Zoom. All right. Uh, Atik, can you please introduce yourself and tell us about, pardon me, your proposed business? Uh, absolutely. Uh, can you guys hear me fine? Yes, we can. Sound great. Perfect. Uh, so, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Atik Bula. I am taking over an already existing gas station located at uh, 4 Collins Court, Madison. It's currently branded as a Phillips 66 gas station uh, with a convenience store attached to it. This is. Uh, uh, it also has an Arby's location next to it. Uh, currently, they already sell alcohol, so they already have uh, a Class A license to sell uh, alcohol and I believe ciders. Um, I am planning to take this over with the close expected on May 1st, uh, barring any unforeseen uh, circumstances. Um, I have a familial, ba a familial background in uh, convenience stores. Uh, my cousin, uh, I relocated to I located to relocated to the Quad Cities two years ago, and a cousin of mine here uh, runs seven gas stations that he owns. So I've been training with him in the in in the past two years or so. Uh, I've also been uh, volunteering at the gas station for the past, I want to say, seven, eight weeks. Um, um, and uh, yeah, absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm not, you know, I did speak with the, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I did leave a message with the, uh, the, the deputy of police, but uh, I'm not sure who was it that res uh, responded and spoke back. I, but I, I did speak with somebody. Uh, from the police. All right, committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? Uh, 
So if anyone was confused like I was about where Collins Court is, it's right by the Dutch Mill Park and Ride. Yeah, so the, uh, the, there's a Greyhound station there. Uh, there's a park and ride. There's also city parking, uh, I believe, would, would be the northwest corner of, the, of this building. So there's a, a lot of activity around. Um, Mitty, what questions do you have for the applicant? Mr. Verbeck, do we have uh, Alder Verveer? Mm, thank you. So you, you had mentioned that you uh, left a message for the police captain but did not speak with them. Is that correct? I, I believe it, it was uh, a deputy of theirs. I, I'm, I'm missing the actual title. I did speak with them for about 10 minutes. And if it, it might have been the same person. But I recall the, at the time of the conversation that they were returning the call on, on, on their behalf. Oh, so uh, they asked me. Yeah, oh, so sorry. I misheard. You actually did have a ten-minute conversation with someone from the Madison Police. Yes. yes. Okay. And what was the outcome of that? Uh, so they asked me some basic questions uh, about the uh, about what my plan is. Um, I talked to them about you know what I uh, what I plan on doing in terms of uh, restricting uh, access of alcohol to minors, and he asked me about my background. I mentioned that. Uh, so the, the, the gas station currently, the way the manager is working is uh, they've had some, you know, they, they've had some problems. Uh, the, the manager that was there uh, was uh, stealing from, you know, stealing lottery, was involved in theft in, uh, on the ATM side. And, and the current owner did not know until the lottery commission actually uh, contacted him and said that, that you might have an issue there. Uh, and then I, I mentioned that, you know, I'm a CPA by background. I also work with... Uh, IT information systems. So I plan on, uh, uh, I actually plan on introducing systems where I can actually track down to the SKU level. It's something that I have experience with uh, in, 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 in my uh, professional uh, experience, being able to code down to uh, and figure out shrinkage and all that sort of stuff and, and how, to, how to improve that. One of the conversations that uh, they brought up was uh, being able to have a little bit of additional oversight and uh, in terms of increasing our camera presence, and I, I couldn't have agreed more. Um, we, the the parking lot that uh, goes, or once you pass the actual gas canopy, there's another there's a city parking lot where there are there or there have been in the past um, some uh, homeless people, uh, and the and the police has come asking for uh, security footage, which uh, was not available. And I plan on addressing that my, the, the first day I get there. Uh, I I'm not exactly sure what the plan is, exactly how many, but we do plan on increasing the number of cameras by close to 10, 12 at the minimum. I appreciate that. Thank you. And did, were you able to make contact with the city council person for that uh, area? Yes. Al so Alder, I did send Alder J.L. Yes, Curry? Yes, I did send them an email. I did not. I did not get a response back from them. I did. Uh, the deputy clerk, uh, Mr. Verbeck, was able did respond to me, but I didn't hear back from uh, all the person Curry. Okay, thank you. And I see that there are no current conditions on the alcohol license at this location, and you've heard that that's been a common conversation this evening. Yes. with other applicants. Do you yes. have any reactions based on your observations of the sales at the store where you've been volunteering? Uh, Did you say you've no, been volunteering so I, at Collins Quarter? You've been volunteering in the Quad Cities? Maybe I misunderstood. No, uh, I've, I've been going to that exact spot. Okay, that's what I thought. That's why you're volunteering, yeah. Um, yeah, so just to learn and get up to speed with it and see what changes I want to bring in. Um, Are they currently I, selling beer there? They are, yes. Okay, because I see there's a big hold on the license currently, and it might be illegal for them to be selling beer currently. Do, okay, you, well. do you see the hold? You want to explain yeah. the hold? Yeah. Mr. Verbeck? I'm sorry, for which? It's for Liberty Station. There. There's a, there's a license hold on the license because of agent problems. And did you say, sir, while we're looking at that, that the Department of Revenue did an inspection on the store recently? 
I, I'm sorry, I was not aware of that. Did I? Oh, I thought you said something about lottery. The, lottery. Sorry, the lot. Yes. So the day stopped selling lottery. The the previous manager that was there was essentially what they were doing was they would they were given authority to essentially scan the tickets. I believe what happens is when you scan a ticket or the booklet, that becomes active, and that means that essentially the 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 owners of the gas station owe the lottery for those tickets. Uh, because now that they're active she would scan them and then just basically give them away to somebody and that person would go scan them somewhere else to see if there are any winners and that na their name kept coming up so he so to basically didn't want to deal with it and so they just stopped selling lottery i see i, I misunderstood your earlier testimony i thought was something that i thought maybe the lottery uh ceased ceased that as a sales outlet because of fraud or whatever occurring at the store so i misunderstood it was it was just employee theft is what you were referring it, it to. it was employee theft the, the yeah. lottery the lottery I, i'm not sure if they're called a commission but the lottery uh commission and the police actually interviewed the manager and the manager actually admitted to to theft they are just waiting to get to uh, to get from the district attorney the exact charges that they plan on uh laying on the person before they uh uh, proceed. Mm. Do you have any thoughts on on if there were conditions added to the license? Uh, so uh, the my understanding is based on the limited experience that I do have is that if you leave uh, if you leave employees with the amount of leeway that they did have. Uh, I would not have expected them to uh, uh, to not do what they were doing, um, and and that that entails you know a lot of the stuff that was going on there. Uh, it, the previous owner did not have access to security camera footage up until when I got there, uh, so they had no idea if the store would be open or not. Um, a couple of times we showed up there, the store was closed. And they had no idea. They had no idea if the store would be open. So my, the way I plan on addressing it is, so for example, lottery, like to me, lottery is something that's reconciled on a daily basis. If we're off by one lottery ticket or the dollar amount of one uh, lottery ticket. Atik, I don't think you're answering yeah, the question have, that Alder and Power Beer asked. I apologize. I didn't, I didn't frame the question very well for you. I thought perhaps you've been <laughs> paying attention to our meeting tonight where we've spent a lot of time working with convenience stores and liquor stores, uh, and we've pretty much uniformly tonight added conditions to the licenses we've issued, we've granted for Class A establishments relating to product offerings, product servings, like no sale of singles. Um, did I don't know if you heard it, if you were listening to the meeting intently or not, I don't blame you if you weren't. So I was just curious if we added a condition, and I was going to ask the police representative tonight if 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 they consider this a sensitive, challenged area or not. Um, given the bus station um, and park and ride and so forth in the area, if if uh, adding a condition would be appropriate or not. This license hasn't been was granted. You know, I believe the last time that this committee had this license before us was back, except for renewal time. Uh, as part of the renewal process annually it was back in 2001 it looks like uh so would, would you have would you object if we added a condition related to to like no sale of single cans in essence um so i i, I did speak to so the the member of the police that contacted me that we did speak about uh single uh singles and and they asked me if i plan on continuing and my and my intention was to and they said that They'd be fine with it, given the 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 amount of increased. Uh, I want to say like vigilance that we plan on adding to the to the area. You know, not allowing any customers to drink around the parking lot and that sort of stuff. So, uh, in, in so in my case, ideally, I'd like to uh, be able to, but you know, it's it, I, I will leave myself up to your, the decision that you guys would like to implement. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll, I'll yield. Uh, do you have more information, by the way, Mr. Verbeck, on why there's a currently apparently a hold on the license and for the applicant's benefit if he's volunteering at the store 
perhaps he should tell the current owner that they can't legally sell beer tomorrow. Yeah, I, I don't. It looks like that hold was put on two days ago, so I'm guessing it came up during uh, the re renewal. Renewal process. Yeah. What would your advice be in terms of can they, should they be selling beer tomorrow? Uh, I would say they need to put in a new application to replace that agent immediately. Mm -hmm. Or is that superseded by this application, perhaps, or addressed by this applications? I, mean, I would defer to the city attorney to okay. answer that question. It's not like they're going to be able to get an application for a change of agent through more quickly. No. no. So... Uh, Alder Knox. Um, I appreciate the applicants sharing their background. And I don't know, there are other issues that's happening there. I, I, I guess if we, I don't know what the pleasure of the commission is, but yeah, I'm, I would kind of like to set some standard things too. Um, one of the things is, is, isn't there a restaurant adjacent to your business? There's, yes, there's, there's an Arby's. So uh, oh, Arby's there and the park and ride where people come and park for periods of time. I just think selling singles kind of reinforces people to hang out either in the restaurant or in their car or whatever. And, and I just got to share with you, and I don't know how relevant it is, but I've been at that gas station on two occasions, and on two occasions, my credit card was compromised. Oh, now, I don't know what's happening with the employees there, and this happened like over two years apart, but I just don't purchase anything there because it just seems like there's something always going on when you go into that establishment. So I like the fact that you have a background in, you know, the fiscal background, the the uh, computer background, because that I just think there was a lot of things going on at that establishment to the point that I would, I pick up people from the bus there and the park and ride part, but I would not frequent the gas station. I just thought, you know, just to let you know that. No, I, absolutely, I appreciate that. Uh, yep. I, I would, I'm not really surprised hearing this. To be honest with you, sir, uh, mm -hmm. I, I've heard a lot, a, a lot of stories. Even there, there was a theft there, and this, this is probably more information than. Uh, but there was a theft there. I want to say last year in summer. Uh, mm -hmm. Essentially, the theft was somebody broke in. They basically broke the glass. They ran towards the the safe, which just happened to be open. They took the safe, and then the, the, the money that was in the safe and left. So as far as the yeah. owner concerned, that, that was as close as it could be to, to an inside job. But that same manager was still there. Uh, uh, and then that manager could not basically stop working when they weren't allowed to work there anymore, uh, mm -hmm. which is essentially the lottery commission, the police telling the owner that you can't have them. So... Um, I believe a lot yeah. of those issues are related to that and lack of oversight and lack of, uh, I want to say, uh, maybe ability uh, to mm -hmm. provide some sort of oversight or just getting sort of in a comfortable uh, zone. But, uh, you know, I can assure you that those are things that uh, uh, they, I can assure you that's uh, not going to be happening uh, going think, forward. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, I think, Max, has your question been answered? Pretty much, okay. I, I just just given the nature of the uniqueness of of your of that business, because they have a lot of people coming and going from right. the park and ride, picking up people at the bus. I think your security situation should definitely be enhanced. Okay. And, and I don't is, know if that's what you talked to talked about with the police, but that's my only uh, uh, in, comment. In in the interest of time. Elder Knox, was that a question or was it just some recommendations to the applicant? Well, my question had to do with, I mean, generally, he talked a little bit about what he was going to do to make sure that the place is secure. He talked about, I think, mentioned some camera things. So that would be just my general idea of he's been there volunteering. What, it, what will he do to make sure that the place is safe and secure? Um, if Because... Those are issues. If there were 
residents closer, you probably would be hearing a lot of that. You're not going to hear a lot of that because most of the people that frequent his business are more transient or driving through. So that's my point. And I don't know if there was anything, Captain Hansen, from that you heard from the police about that area. Maybe you could share some of that. Yeah, um, I didn't speak to, I think what the applicant is referring to is Lieutenant uh, Scott Kleinfeld, if he didn't talk to the captain, um, because that is uh, the number two out there. And he said male. Um, so I think that's who he's referring to. But um, we would definitely support the restriction on no uh, singles being sold. So. All right. And, and additionally, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Captain Hansen. No, go, go ahead. Um, and the park and ride, we have had various crimes out there, drug arrests and some weapon violations. So um, it is over the years, nothing uh, recent, but um, again, a slow approach would be appropriate in our opinion from the police department. Thank you, Captain Hanson. Uh, Alder Knox, do you have any further questions? No, I think Captain okay. Hanson address if the real issue was about the singles i would think he would not want to be doing that at that level cool thank you alder knox um committee do you have any further questions that you would like the applicant to answer all right jim do we have any other registrants for this item we do not all right uh Committee, feel free to discuss, or if someone feels prepared to make a complete motion, that would also be fine. What is your pleasure? I suppose we could move to approve with the conditions that we have been discussing uh, previously, in particular, um, no selling singles and those other conditions will be appropriate. I still have a question before I make a motion. So we don't know anything about what the what Mike was referring to in terms of some hold or something. So... That was something that was placed very recently on there, and uh, Jim thought that it was likely related to the drama with the manager, who was presumably the agent. Okay. okay. The whole. So I guess I specifically correct if correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Verbeck. The hold is because there's no currently current approved liquor agent apparently at this location. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the implications of that? It means that they sh are not currently allowed to be selling alcohol. But it is also likely that they have not yet been informed of that. So would anything we do be prohibitive of, well, <laughs> you know, so that situation? We, the, the item that we have before us right now is to approve or deny a new license for a new operator at this location, which doesn't really have anything to do with the people who are running it now. Okay. In that case, I, I'll move um, approval of this license with conditions um, that we've been, those conditions that we've been applying in these uh, situations. I don't, and you, you, I don't know if someone can give some more specific I'll, language. I'm happy to and second. And I'm losing my voice, too. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm happy to second with the uniform conditions for Class A establishments 1 and 2, which we could read for the umpteenth time tonight if we won otherwise. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, would, you, would you be willing to do that, Chair, for the applicant's I would be delighted. benefit? Thank you so much. You uh, so, memorized. Condition one, the establishment shall not sell, dispense, or give away fermented malt beverages in the original container in amounts less than the amount contained in a six-pack of 12-ounce bottles or cans. 
This is only applicable to fermented malt beverages, which fall into the following categories of brands. Domestic pre- premium, domestic sub premium, which includes value and economy brands, malt, liquor, and similarly situated imported brands. That's condition one. Condition two is flavored malt beverages containing up to 6% alcohol by volume may not be, so should make that shall not be, shall not be sold dispensed or given away in the original container in amounts less than a four-pack of 12-ounce bottles or cans. Flavored malt beverages containing over 6% alcohol by volume uh, shall not be sold, dispensed, or given away in the original container in amounts less than a six-pack of 12-ounce bottles or cans. Um, And does this app... I should remember this, but I don't. Does this application include... Is this a... Class A beer. It's class, it's class A beer, Class A cider, right? Excellent. That makes it easier. Yes. Okay, so Aldernox, you want to move those conditions? Yes. Excellent. Alder Revere, nice you want to second. second it? Excellent. Committee, uh, any discussion? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none... Motion on item 36 carries. Uh, it is granted with conditions. Congratulations, Atik, and good luck with that location. It sounds like it's going to be exciting. All right, coming down the home stretch, although I've got a couple of surprises for you. Uh, <laughs> Great. Item, but uh, we're going to let these fine people do yes, their stuff first. I feel bad and, for everybody uh, not, waiting. Not have them have to watch more of the show if they don't want to. So, item 37 is a new license application for Turkish Kitchen at 2616 Monroe. Uh, I'm going to go way out on the limb and guess that the person wearing a Turkish Kitchen <laughs> t-shirt is the applicant for this one. So, come on down. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your proposed business. My name is... Hussein Chok Urlel. I am the cook and the owner of Turkish Kitchen Madison. We are located on Monroe Street and we are open since September 2023. We are selling <coughs> mainly kebabs. So uh, originally we weren't thinking to sell alcohol, but uh, after we open the store, we see that it's very important for our store's future because there's a very high demand from our customers. That is not an uncommon story. Uh, committee, what questions do you have for the applicant? Mr. Verbeck, do we have any other registrants for this item? We do not. Committee, what is your pleasure? Move approval. Your motion from Ms. Westra to approve. Do I hear a second? Second from Mr. Bruchak. Any discussion? Alder Revere. Thank you. Uh, welcome. We did receive a communication today from the uh, city council person for your area and he just was uh, wanting us to ask if indeed you held the information session yes you, know, did, you did. added a date on yes. the orange sign mm-hmm. could you tell us about that please um i uh, the orange uh, information sticker exactly on the window yeah since i got it and I put the date there and the time, but nobody showed up. Mm -hmm. And then I called everybody and left messages to people who is on my list. Very good. And, And he says that you met with the Dungeon Monroe Neighborhood Association? I called them also, left them a message, then they call me back and they said they are supporting and if I have any question, so they are all good with us. Okay, very good. And one last thing, 
um, I note that you have a solo violinist. Yes. Right? Yes. And so I just wanted to let you know you're lucky you don't need an entertainment license from us. Right. Actually, I was but, I just heard from you guys, and I was just <laughs> thinking about that. Yeah, we have one lady coming Wednesdays and Friday nights. Nice. Right. And and so if you ever expand and have more of an ensemble. You will get the pleasure of coming back to us for an entertainment license, but we won't hopefully make you wait this long at night. No problem. No Thank you for your patience very much, very much for being here all night. Thank you very much. Is there yeah. questions? Uh, Ms. Carter? There might be another question. I just wanted to know what time did you hold the hours for your informational? Two o'clock. March 27, okay. two o'clock. Thank you. Um, if this is the right time, I I move to grant. We already have a motion to grant. So. Oh, well then I concur. Excellent. <laughs> Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. Hi, I have a question for the applicant while we have him. I noticed that on the application to list the members of the LLC, there was no one listed. And so I wanted to know um, who I the members the of the... I am the only owner. Oh, oh okay, great. Um, Jim, if we could correct that in the application, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. To confirm you, sir, if I could just jump in. To confirm you are an LLC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the LLC, and we appreciate, this is very legible, <laughs> your application. So the LLC that um, is with the state of Wisconsin is Turkis Kitchen Madison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she was referring to, there was a question here, number 17, not that you, I don't know if you have the application in front of you or not, but we asked you to list the members of the LLC, so she, you should have just listed your name there. I see. And you skipped over that, but that's fine. Yeah, you almost won the prize for the most legible application tonight, I would say. So thank you for that. <laughs> well, he's doing that assistant city attorney McReynolds. Yeah, I'm being a stickler for complete applications tonight, everybody. So that's why you're here. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, just under that part is where you check if um, information was submitted for background checks. Um, Jim, can you can confirm if that was done? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, because right, it was perfect. it was we fill out the back of the agent form, which has the background check information, and they they did run a background check on them. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, any further questions? Any further discussion? You, you can have a seat. Um, all right. We have a motion to grant. Um, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 37 is granted. Congratulations. Thank and you. And I hope much. you have a good rest of your night. And thanks again for your patience tonight with us. All right. Next up, item 38, new license application for Gamma Ray Bar at 121 West Main. Is that you? Come on yep. up. Kevin's been here all night. <laughs> How's it going? I'm also a Fro Productions as well. So. <laughs> right on. How'd you pick that name? You know, it came to me. It just came to me in the middle of the night one day. I said, like, nice. you know, Fro Productions, you know, it's uh So <laughs> We certainly appreciate your patience and your wife's course, patience yeah, all night. Uh, you know, you. Introduce I don't get yourself? time out with my wife too much. So oh. this, is, this is it. <laughs> well, awesome. <laughs> Please introduce yourself and let us know what you're proposing. Yeah, my name is Kevin uh, Lamar Wilmot II, and I'm proposing uh, opening up my own bar at 121 West Main called the Gamma Ray Bar in downtown Madison. We're gonna be an independent music venue and bar that does entertainment independently and regionally uh, seven days out of the week. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I've, I've worked in Madison's music industry uh, since December of 2013. So maybe you've seen me at a show before or seen me on stage. But I started working at the High Noon Saloon, which was an independent owned venue. And then when uh, Kathy sold to Frank Productions in 2017, I have been working with Live Nation since. Mm -hmm. I uh, managed the Majestic uh, Theater downtown, uh, uh, the bar, 
since we uh, reopened for entertainment uh, coming out of COVID in what was it, July of 2022, yes. And then I also managed the Sylvie with the Majestic at the same time uh, the last year as well. So I just have a lot of experience uh, in the music industry. I started at the door doing security and, and being a bar back, and, and I've been a bartender ever, ever since I moved up the ladder. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Well, I've got two. So the first one, you're applying for an alcohol license. Are you planning to later apply for an entertainment license? I am. I did talk to Mike about this uh, already, that we applied uh, for our, our entertainment license, and that will be a part of the next ALRC meeting. So I will be hanging out with you all next next month as well. Hopefully Luckily, not this late. Uh, <laughs> hopefully not this late, but uh, you know, I'm just happy that you all do this process and do it so thoroughly. The good news is entertainment licenses are before alcohol licenses by tradition on our agenda. <laughs> I, so I, you, I, won't, you definitely won't be last but not least next month. Uh, I've always, uh, my last name's Wilmot, so I've always kind of been last. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right, and so it's going to be the Gamma Ray Bar. What are you going to do to prevent hulks. What was that? Hulks. Hulks? Like oh, yes. Gamma rays? You mean the, the, the gamma ray <laughs> reference, you know. Uh, yes, yeah, so, you know, the, the gamma ray is also it's a frequency, right? So it's a shout out to the frequency oh. as well. And it's also, you know, for me, just Darwin. Uh, a cool work. You know, I was I was making the idea and I, I the Webb telescope had seen the biggest tel- gamma ray in the universe. And I was like, gamma ray. I was like, that's a cool term. And I Googled Gamma Ray Bar, and no one uh, in Google's world has ever made that, that bar, and I, I kind of just ran with it. And as I've done it, I've learned more about I know you're a comic, a comic fan. I, I need to learn more about it. So maybe you can teach me about what, what made the Hulk, right? Uh, I mean, comic book magic. Uh, it's, uh, I, if you actually get a bunch of gamma rays, you'll die. So <laughs> not a good thing I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you won't have them for real, so it's okay. Uh, committee, what question? Uh, Mr. Bruchak. Oh. Uh, you're going to apply for an 18. We can talk about this next month. Of course. But, um, you'll have an entertainment license, and you'll attract a, a lot of uh, people of all ages. Um, have you uh, looked into, you know, ID checking? You have experience checking IDs, well, obviously, yeah, but like, you know, with I think, the you know, new technology. With, with modern technology, we'll have an ID scanner, yep. and I'll have a wand. And, and okay. I, I feel very lucky that, you know, I did start at the door and at security, and a lot of the trained uh, security staff uh, from Frank Productions and all the other venues are uh, knocking on my door, very much wanting to work at the Gamma Ray Bar as well. So oh, that's going to be, it'll be a very tight knit group of people that have a lot of experience in the industry, keeping minors uh, in the room safe and also uh, the 21 year olds uh, with the beer in their hand. I know that uh, they were good at checking IDs at the frequency. I went there on my 21st birthday. Showed them my ID, and they put two X's on my hands, and I tried to order a drink. I couldn't get one, even though I was my 21st birthday. You know, it's, it's kind of like <laughs> the, the, the... Darwin the, was strict. <laughs> the road of someone that's freshly 21. I'm definitely going to double check every single time. And, and uh, uh, you know, I told uh, Captain Hansen that, you know, that, you know, one of my favorite things uh, when I worked at the door was taking IDs. Okay. And I, you know, and so I'll, I'll definitely have a culture for that at my bar as well. Excellent. Uh, committee, what other questions do you have for the applicant? Alder Revere. Thank you. You didn't mention the kids programming yet. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, Saturday mornings I'll be doing kids shows, uh, which I think is going to be really yeah, – I have two young children myself, and so it's just kind of built in by design. And so we'll be doing like, a, you know, doors at 10 a.m. The show will run from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, I'll be doing music myself. Uh, I'll probably get David Lando down there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, local, uh, you know, musicians that do children's entertainment and that type of thing around town. I'll be reaching out to find programming for all of those shows, most certainly. And at those shows, obviously, the the, the parent will be with the young child, I imagine, and then that will be just uh, that'll keep me up to par with all of the regulations for that type of license. And the milk will be served then. You, Chocolate you milk be, yes. will be served. Yes. Uh, you know the. That's the what you serve in the neighborhood association meeting. You know, so, uh, right. They're shelf safe. <laughs> you don't even have to have them so oh refrigerated, gosh. which is kind of twisted if you ask me but uh, uh and then also you know we'll have some juice we'll we'll be selling um frozen pizzas the wisconsin delicacy that we all know uh there's more frozen pizzas here in wisconsin than, than any other place in the world and i i kind of plan on highlighting uh, maybe a different frozen pizza each month to make it fun so that we don't have one favorite we can we can pass the the love of pizza all around <laughs> 
And then I have one other question that's perhaps a little more serious, but I think it's awesome that you're having the kids programming, definitely, Kevin. And that is the issue of capacity that we talked about, and I appreciate you going ahead and taking my advice and speaking with the fire marshal. Of course. Um, so do you want to share with the committee then yeah, what, your, talk, what I, your updated capacity number is for the license? I, I saw that on the, on the, on the forum there. Yeah, I talked to Bill Sullivan, and we had a great talk about the capacity. And, and when I did with the city clerk, they put 129, so that's what I ran with. But he said there's a lot of different capacity numbers out there in the city uh, world. And so he said that 118 is the certified uh, capacity for uh, staff and patrons in the building. Thank you for that. Of course, like, yeah. Um, this is my first time owning a business, so it's, it was, it's been nice to meet all these kind mm-hmm. folks in Madison, and and uh, and I appreciate all the work that you do. Oh, thank you. Of course. Awesome. Committee, what other questions do you have for the applicant? All right. Do you have any other registrants? We do not. Committee, what is your pleasure? I happily move to grant with the capacity of 118 persons. Do we hear a second? Second. Second. All right. Uh, motion from Alder Verveer, second from Mr. Bruchak. Is there any discussion? If Alder Verveer. Just say, we'll look forward to seeing you back, Kevin, next month again. You won't be have to be here as late for it's your, gonna eight, be so, for your 18 so much plus fun entertainment and, and, license. And, and, but I can't wait to have anyway, you all at, at the, at the game right I, I just want to say how excited we are. Obviously, you've had a lot of media buzz about this. Uh, endeavor in the last few weeks, and it's well deserved. And the neighborhood association meeting obviously went went spectacular. Everyone in the Bassett neighborhoods looking forward to having you as a neighbor. So and a lot of those folks so came welcome. down for my my informational meeting. Actually, yeah, it was that's really great. fun. It was really that's great. So you got nice to, to they got really, to meet you in person. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's, it's been so great to be back on West Main. I didn't I didn't mention as well that you know I moved Jenna's, to Madison. The uh, you know, uh, when I was twenty two years old. Who your family is? Yeah, so you know, I moved here to work on West Main. You know, so nice. it really is a homecoming, and and I love downtown Madison, and I can't wait to bring back independent arts to the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you have a familial connection with Jenna's. Yes, yeah, uh, Chris. Yeah, because <laughs> so, so I, my best friend growing up in Kansas, his uh, sister, uh, my my best friend's uh, mother is Chrissy Jenna's mm-hmm. sister. Sorry, I've so, been sitting in a room for so like two the, hours, so my words are. <laughs> right, well, it's been more than two hours. I think we've been here, but anyway. So I think it's cool. I think it's cool. You're you're doing a full circle in the hundred block of West Main from when you uh, first came to Madison. It's a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. Uh, the Slipper Club and, and the Rainbow Room and the Frequency mm-hmm. have such a legacy in Madison, mm-hmm. and, and it's the Gamma Ray Bar. Hopefully, will continue that legacy on for for 10 or more years and larry light called me twice today and he also called the clerk's office today to say he really apologizes he couldn't be here tonight to testify in your favor oh that's but his, so health, sweet. his health prevented him from coming because in the past he's always come for his tenant tenants uh when they've been before the committee over the years so it's been uh so great working with the light family and yeah. with with yeah. larry and with paul you know as mm-hmm. well and 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 larry is a top-notch human and, and i appreciate what he's done for West Main, you know, it's. Uh, I'm glad he's still on the block getting his his Pepsi and his mm-hmm. his chili from the Paradise. But I know he isn't able to make it out to these yeah. things as yeah, much. He can't as drive he anymore. To, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks again, and congratulations, and good yeah. luck. Assuming the vote goes well in a moment here. So we have a motion to grant with a capacity of 118. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. Is there any dissent? All right, hearing none, motion carries. Item number 38 is granted. Congratulations, and we'll see you next month. Thank you so much. I'll see you hopefully. The May 15th is also the day before my birthday, so I'm I'm excited to come down and hang out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you then. We might be in a different room. Usually we're downstairs. Oh, sweet. Are we downstairs Thank next you month, Jim? Thank for all your time today. It's really right. thanks. Well, thanks again for hanging out with us. Process. Thanks for your patience tonight. All right, so we got a couple more things. Uh, the exciting part. First up, item 18 again. Um, so let's see. Assistant City Attorney Mick Reynolds, would you please share with the committee what you shared with me? And after that, folks, I'm going to be asking for a motion to reconsider. Thank you, Chair. Um, so... After that item, after you already voted on that item, 
Um, mm -hmm. After 8 p.m., I was able to get into the Department of Financial um, Institutions website and check on the LLC that had applied, and they are dissolved LLC. Mm. Um, so, in my understanding is that a dissolved LLC cannot have a valid, valid seller's permit either. Um, so, you know, based on that and based on some of the other sort of inconsistencies or incompleteness of the application, um, I just wanted to raise that. I did want to also let you know, I tried to look it up while you were um, discussing the item, but today the DFI site was down from 5 to 8 p.m. <laughs> so I looked it up right away as soon as I could. Um, so, yes, unfortunate information, and I do not think this should be referred to council. So uh, do I hear a motion to reconsider item 18? Uh, Ms. Farley? So moved. And do I hear a second, Ms. Carter? Second. All right. Second. All in favor of reconsideration, which if you're not familiar, basically means we take this thing we already voted on and we unvote and then we get to make a new vote on it. So um, is there, uh, gosh, this one does require some kind of super majority. Let's, doesn't it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, never mind. Okay, uh, is there any dissent to, um, Reconsidering. Hearing none, motion carries. Item 18 is back before us again. Now, I would entertain a motion to refer to the next regularly scheduled ARC meeting. Is there such a motion? So move. Moved by uh, Ms. Wester. Is there a second? Second from Ms. Farley. Any discussion of the motion to refer item 18 to the next regularly scheduled ARC meeting? Hearing none, is there any dissent? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 18 is referred. Mr. Verbick, will you please let the applicant know that they need to have a valid LLC and a valid state seller's permit, and if they can get that in order in the next month, we'll be able to deal with them at next month's meeting? Already done. Beautiful. You're amazing. All right, uh, so um, stay tuned because there's still two more things coming oh uh, after these. But um, number 39, report of MPD, Captain Hansen. Is there anything to which you would... You had more exciting items, regular item. Yes. Um, Captain Hansen, do you have anything to which you would like to draw the committee's attention? Um, just uh, the biggest two items are uh, we started bike training for our central CPT today, and they will be uh, covering the downtown area and to some degree on bike patrol. Nice. And we're excited for uh, their visibility um, and uh, outreach that they'll be able to. And then obviously in almost less than 10 days, uh, Mifflin Street over at uh, – uh, on the Mifflin Street Block Party. It's our 55th year of this event. And tomorrow night I'll be joining uh, Alder Revere, Building Inspection, UW, Fire Department, uh, and Community Police Team Officers um, at an informational meeting at the Senior Center on uh, West Dayton there. So that's at 7 p.m. And uh, we're we have plans in place to make this a safe event once again and uh, hoping people stay home. Best of luck. <laughs> uh, committee, uh, what questions do you have for the captain? It's going to rain. We'll do a day. rain dance on Saturday for you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Any questions for Captain Hanson? All right. Thank you, Captain. Uh, report of clerk's office. Mr. Verbeck, is there anything to which you would like to draw the committee's attention? Um, I'll say we're we're wrapping up uh, alcohol license renewals. Um, the fifteenth was the deadline to get your for renewal forms in. Uh, we do accept them up until the thirtieth of April. However, anyone submitting at this point would suffer a two hundred and fifty dollar late fee uh, for late submission. Um, I say we have about 190 left out of about 700, so it's about 27%. Um, we've been following through as we've gotten close to the deadline to folks to remind them to submit their renewals. 
Um, and uh, we're hoping to get them before uh, April 30th. But other than that, I don't have any updates. Cool. Committee, what questions do you have for the Deputy City Clerk, Alder Verveer? Thank you. First, Jim, thank you very much for adding the operator licenses to your summary. I appreciate it. And then second, as it relates to baked wings at State Street and West Johnson Street, mm -hmm. have you reached out to them and uh, as to their license issuance deadline passing? I did. They they had submitted a renewal form because I had reached out to them um, not realizing they had passed the deadline. I did send them an email along with all the other ones that are approved in October to let them know that the deadline was coming up and they needed to get me a request to extend if they needed to extend. Uh, I did not hear back from them. Um, I did hear back from them with the renewal form. After they submitted it, I told them I realized that they have exceeded their, their deadline um, and they did not respond to my email. Ask them to submit renewal or to submit a request for extension um, so that way their license was considered surrendered at this point. And if they want to continue the pursuit of alcohol sales, that they'd have to apply again. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with them. They started demolition and then stopped, and there's been no construction mm. there. So thank you for that. I just wanted a hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Ms. Farley. Uh, um, I, I I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but you said if I had any questions for uh, um, earlier on the call, I think Alder Revere had mentioned a newsletter from the DR. DOR. Oh yeah. Um, is that information that you could provide to the rest of the committee? Absolutely, yeah. that's a great suggestion. Thank you, Miss yeah. Farley. Nice. Yeah, it's a. It's quarterly or bi-monthly uh, alcohol. They're creating a new division no. at, at DOR. And I think <laughs> Sherry's not saying no to me. I think she's saying no to Teddy, too, the dog, I hope. Oh. <laughs> are you talking to me, Sherry, or Teddy, too? I'm talking to Teddy, too. That's what I thought and hoped. Sorry. Anyway, anyway it's simply an email that anyone in the world could subscribe to, and they'll email it to you, the newsletter. But so if you can find the link and yeah. send it to us, Jim, that would be great. Yeah. And your colleagues in the office, too. Yes, uh, yeah. I work on email with that. Thank you, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Ms. Farley. Uh, what other questions do you have for Mr. Verbeck? Well, I would just say, uh, if you haven't already, um, we do still have people who need to respond to the doodle poll for uh, the May separations meeting. I don't think we have enough for... Uh, for me to schedule, we, we don't have enough for a quorum yet, and those have responded to the doodle poll um, for the May separations meeting. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to, I know me and, and Chair Donnelly know, um, Dr. Reese has resigned from the ALRC, effective immediately, um, so we do not, we're currently at eight sitting members of the ALRC. Um, and so she was one of the ones that had signed up from the doodle poll, so that's that's one I can't really count on that's on there. Um, and then if you didn't see your email right today, um, there's an error in the clerk's office uh, regarding putting an item on today's agenda for a remodel for a change of premises. Um, so I was looking to see if the committee would be available to do a very quick virtual meeting uh, sometime in the next couple weeks so that way we can consider that and get it recommended uh, to the the regular May seventh uh, Common Council meeting, I think I have about four um, voting members have responded to that so far. Thank you, um, and then uh, hopefully we can get that sent um, uh, scheduled soon. And then um, if we want, we could potentially put the other um, uh, the other alcohol license today that had the wine. I could I could. Put a publication in it, and that would prevent them from having to I'll submit a new application. That to your discussion. Okay. Um, yeah, de depending on how soon we schedule it, um, I would need time for us to put uh, three notices in the newspaper in order for it to become official that we can consider that. But um, if the committee's open to it, it's something I could do. But I'm I'm fine doing it, and that would prevent them from having to sure. do the application process again. If we just notice it with the wine, um, we could. Reconsider and then approve this new one with the with the BC, BB or C wine. Um, Lowercase R, reconsider. Yes. Cool. Alder Revere. Thank you. Out of curiosity, which, which is the other uh, application that we'll see at the special meeting? What, is, what, what establishment is remodeling? Uh, Wando's. 
Yeah, the, oh. the Jay's Jay's bar, the old red shed. Oh, yeah, he called me today. I haven't called him back yet. Now I know why he's yeah. calling. He was uh, so he submitted he submitted an application on deadline day for the change of premises, and then a week later submitted an application for an entertainment license. And I was remembering, I told him the entertainment license couldn't be put on the April agenda. I failed to remember that there was also a change of premise item on there and it was not in the correct basket. So, or I may have moved it to the one, not thinking that that's the conversation I had with him about not being able to put it on the May agenda. Um, but I think he doesn't want to wait a month for the construction, I presume, right? I didn't ask him, but I feel like it's, it, it's, it if was my fault. Mistake. Yeah, it's my fault, and I don't want that to be a potential that, that holds them up. So, Cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, did I just see Alder Evers? Can we help you with something? He just texted me, and I haven't had a chance to respond about Turkish Kitchen. We, we granted the license for Turkish Kitchen. Only a few minutes ago. Well, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just showing up. Um, well, thank you for your email, though. Yeah, I was a little concerned that um, I was never notified or informed of an informational meeting, but I know that the neighborhood welcomes uh, uh, a business in this location. Past restaurants have struggled, and we're hoping that this one would succeed. But I hope that the applicant was reminded that there, it's important to communicate with the alder and to give the neighborhood a little bit more notice to participate in, in their informational process. Cool. Thank you very much. All right, just a couple last things. Um, Assistant City Attorney Mick Reynolds. Yes. So... Um, I have not had the opportunity to read through everything that Act 73 did, um, but I would like to make a request of you, um, if you have time, would you be willing to write up a summary of it for us, and Jim, could you add a discussion item uh, so that we can do any question and answer we need to about it. Sure. And like, it doesn't just like it doesn't have to be extremely detailed. It doesn't have to include everything. There's no way that we're going to digest and know everything that's in there. But interesting, meaningful things that have changed, like the fact that a Class C license isn't just for restaurants anymore. Um, like I know some of us have built up a fair deal of institutional knowledge over the, uh, the years, and I would be interested to know which of that is now wrong. Is that something you would be comfortable doing for us? Yes, I can do that. I um, will not be able to attend the next meeting in May. Jenna is going to handle that one on her own. And then it looks like... Um, I'm actually attending a conference in June where we will be talking about this in detail with other municipal attorneys. So if it's all right with you, Cherry, I think it would be helpful if we did that in June. That sounds like a great idea. Okay, great. Thank you. Excellent. Mr. Bruchak? I, I was going to say, I will say that the I just sent the link to the DOR on tap. I said the latest one they had. Sort of does sort of an overview about yeah. that. Oh, lovely an article on it. Uh, yeah, chart with effective dates. It's very yeah. Much I would perfect. say the big ones that that affect yeah. us is the the Class C wine. Um, they have axe throwing is an other business, although we've already issued one as a recreational. Um, there's the ability for um, transfer of uh, reserve licenses across any municipality within the county, okay. whereas before it used to just be contiguous or within two miles. Um, <laughs> And then that's that's the big ones. Uh, there is coming down later in January of uh, 2025. Uh, the state's going to have a statewide operator license because um, oh, right now there's only municipality one municipal ones. Um, and then there's other things like not allowing mist alcohol, mist machines, and uh, batch cocktails that are more <laughs> um, 
and and off having safe safe ride program information that are more in the establishment sort of changes that we won't really see in the committee. Alcohol mist machines. Yep. What a great idea, <laughs> uh, Ms. Westra. Um, thinking about this, so the committee has pretty much turned over um, since the last time we had a DOR agent come in and talk to us and answer questions. That was highly informative. I loved that. Many years ago. Um, <laughs> And I think it would be beneficial for everyone, especially um, who's new since the last time they came in to talk would be great. Good thinking. Yeah. Uh, can I just... Uh, there's only a handful of people who aren't new since the last time they came in. Exactly. Yeah. Mr. Brishock? I, I was just going to say that there is a publication that I found very helpful um, about Act 73. Um, put together by the Wisconsin Legislative Council. Oh, that sounds great. It's about like what's it, twenty-five pages, something like that. Could you send that I, to Jim's so he can send it out? To yeah, us? I can do that, and it's probably. Um, yeah, I'll send that to Jim, and then he can forward it to the. Beautiful. Committee. Yeah. Thank you. Look forward to it. Okay, <clears throat> one last thing before adjournment. So. Um, oh, Assistant City Attorney McReynolds. So I just wanted to confirm, I, I think if I write something up, it might be very repetitive of the two things that we just mentioned. That, that's fine. But, we but can just otherwise, do a Q&A. Yeah, and... Read those and then I will still um, maybe highlight some of the things that definitely most affect us. Great. Okay. So uh, the city has a 12-year term limit for city committees, so I can only be on this through our August meeting. Oh, no. So uh, ne Amy. Next, <laughs> next month is going to be my last month as chair. I'm not oh, going to wow. run for chair again. So I wanted to give people some notice so you'd have time to think about uh, running for chair and vice chair. I have two recommendations to make, although, of course, you can make your own decisions. Uh, First is I would strongly recommend that the chair plan to be here in person. And the second is please don't run for your vice chair if you don't want to be chair. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Mike? <laughs> uh, I, you know, what, it's, what that actually comes from is a number of times when I've been on nonprofit boards and somebody's like, well, I'll be vice president, but I don't want to be president. I'm like, then don't be vice president. <laughs> The vice president is the spare tire on the presidential <laughs> automobile. The only point of the job is to be president when you need to. Cool. So I just wanted to give people some time to think about that. Um, at this point, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move adjournment. All right. Got a motion from Mr. Bruchak, second from Ms. Westra. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed to have the same privilege. Ayes have it. Motion carries. ALRC is adjourned at, oh goodness, help us, 9.46 p.m. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.